don't even know what episode we on. Fifty three. I think we're fifty three. Episode fifty three. Cool, yeah, let's, I'll say fifty three. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm usually um, well prepared for these episodes. You know, I get my team. Everybody gets here on time. You know, get all the lights, the camera work equipment. But the last thing, the most important piece of my whole ritual, getting ready for the Source City podcast, is my fit. I try to look nice. I try to get everything down. Today, I was like, what do I wear? We have Lisa Ann in the building. Oh, my God. What do I wear? What do I? Oh, my God. So I scrapped this whole thing together, Globetrotters, you know, because I always think we like the Harlem Globetrotters of this podcast game, especially in our industry, you know. We play, uh, pass it here, hoop, boom, alley-oop, dunk, TZ finishes it off. But, man, I'm just really happy about this guest tonight, man. It's just an honor. You know her from, you know, the adult film industry or what she's doing now with her new two new books out, The Life and The Life Back. I'm currently reading The Life Back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in reverse, actually. I'm going to go back and watch, and read The Life after this. Might do the Amazon and hear, you know, the yes. listening audio version of that one. On my plane rides, but man, we have the just ever so lovely media personality entrepreneur Lisa Ann, the legend in the building. Thank you for having me and great choice because my very first time to the spectrum to see an actual live event was the Globetrotters. Really? And even as an adult, I still do like to go see the Globetrotters. I just think yeah. they're fun. They're I saw them for the first time as an adult. That was like maybe a couple months ago. Oh, I saw them as a kid every really? year they came through. It was one of the great things. My parents oh. really put sports in my life young, especially my yeah. mom with basketball. And, you know, Globetrotters were amazing. And we, I saw them in UCF at the big arenas and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, this is the new age guys, but they're doing like skits and stuff. There's like music turns on. They like drop the ball and get break down into a whole dance. I'm like, what is happening it's right the now? TikTok version. <laughs> yeah, they, they're literally hitting everything. That's like 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 pop culture references. Like leave the door open came on. They just stopped and tried to hit on a fan. I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, they yep. don't sell out the whole arena so that every no. kid has a good seat. Right. And I love that yeah. they do that. They could be greedy and sell out the whole thing. And they and they cut it out right here. And I always thought that was cool, too. That is really cool. That was a great experience, man. Easy, what's going on, bro? Well, what listen, guys, first of all, how are you busy, man. out there, man? Things have been... It's been well, man. You know, we've both been, we've both been on here on our grind, brother. And there's a lot of a lot of great things that people can, can check in. If you go to YouTube.com, Backstop Sports City Podcast... And check on everything that we have going on on our YouTube, Twitter.com, back on Source City Pod, follow updates and everything that we have going on. But, you know, first thing, I want to give a shout out to my brother. Mm-hmm. He threw out the first pitch for the Miami Marlins, man. I got to oh! give you a shout out for that. I did do that. God, I did do that. Shout out for that. Oh, that's and so cool. That was so dope, man. I'm on my IG. We, we was, um, you know, connection. So I don't know when he was doing it, but I knew it was coming. Right, right. So, and then when I saw it, I saw the jersey, I was like, my dog, there he is. So he came out there, man. He threw out the first pitch with the had the fly jersey on, man. Strike yeah. right down the middle, brother. Did better than fifty cent. <laughs> yeah. So I was just my whole thing was like, don't skip the ground. <laughs> and, then, and then you know, you know, I'm not. I didn't play baseball, but you know, the fun times you do play when you stand on that mound, you don't realize how far it is until you like standing. Yeah. You're like, oh, I gotta put a little, I put a little strength on it. You know what I mean? You saw me walking. I was like, oh, further? Like, oh, oh, all the way over there? Okay. And so I got over there. I was like. Okay, it's just like little league, and it's like I had first. Off, I thought I was going to get warm up throws. Didn't come. You didn't, didn't practice. Happen. They didn't give me nothing. No, so, on your own, you didn't practice. No, because <laughs> like the night before, I was traveling, so I was just like, oh, I'm like, I, so unless stressful. I get a big rock, unless I get a big rock, you know, like, uh, <laughs> all right, let me get some practice rounds. I got nothing. So yeah, I just went out there, just like dry, cold shoulder, just like, all right, let me give me the football throw, a little Russell Wilson, and um, I made it to the mound, a little far left, a little bit, almost ball. Territory, but he caught it. It didn't skip the ground. It didn't go to you know uh, midfield. It didn't was go to it was, a little kid yeah, that was like, yeah. "I got it." Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, so I was like, I was happy. I'm like, I can, I can be proud of that one. Absolutely. But yeah. And, so. uh, in other news, um, this past weekend, you know, it's been a long journey, but your boy was recently inducted yes. to the WXW Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yes, yes sir. I've All been at this a long time, yes, man. Sir. Um, long road man of wrestle music for a lot of your favorites and working with my brother here. He definitely, I wasn't able to make the ceremony, but thank you guys for for all the love, the plaque. Thank you guys for this whole eight years of this grind, and I am more than excited and thankful for being inducted, man. You know that it means you live forever, so I definitely appreciate that. But into the ads, 
to the ads here. Make sure you guys go in to check out the new project we have coming out that we had coming out in March called Tears. You guys can check out that project we had out. It is a classic. Yes. My brother here, executive produced his best work here, and I'm sitting back just watching him work. And it was it was some of the some of the best work I've ever been a part of. I'm proud of my brother. Make sure you go to all dis- distributed markets, digital planets to go get that. You can go to Spotify, iTunes, all platforms to get that. And also too. You know, um, and the one last announcement before we get to that, we are both finishing. Uh, he's just getting started, and I'm finishing. Just We're both started. working on solo, our, our solo projects. So we are both working on our projects. Now we both deep dived in. I was just in the studio with him, uh, listening to his new project he has coming out. Whenever he does decide to put it out, you know, this is Andre. I'm big boy, so we all work. <laughs> you know, we all work in our own. Ways. We all work in our own ways. But shout out to shout out to my brother, man, yeah. giving that. Giving that um that solo project to run and, and giving that giving it a shot, man. How's it feel? Like just to It's a lot of hard work, bro. Cause like now I gotta go off my own instincts and trust them mm-hmm. rather than just like, hey, what you got? What you think? Or add to it. I'm like, no, I'm in my own. I'm like, so yeah, definitely the Andre feeling. I'm like, I got incense burning. I got flowers. I got like doing yoga yeah. poses and stuff in there. Just like, where's my get my feng shui going? Get it right for the music. But it's been an excellent, amazing process, and I got some really surprising features on the way too. So. Absolutely, man. And uh, you know, make sure you guys once again, once again, before we move on to this wonderful show with with, with the greatest of all time, make sure you guys go goat. to all Mike the goat Lisa digital the goat. platforms and get that album, salute it, show love to it, stream it, and you know, we're still working. So now, Lisa, what has been going on, man? What's been what's been popping? You know, I am so happy to be out doing things in person again. For you mm. in Florida, it was different. You yeah. opened up a lot sooner. Yes. Uh, New York, even even venues didn't want to fly because they weren't sure if things were going to change, right? Yeah, so right. I have spent this entire first half of this year just reconnecting with friends, uh, with people that I've either worked with or just stayed in touch with. And I've just been kind of flying a lot. like, And it's been great. You know, like yeah. all the annoying things at the airport aren't really that annoying right now because yeah. I'm so glad it's happening. Oh, you know give what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Listen, what is annoying is the no mask traveling for me is everybody wants a photo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't do photos at the airport. I don't do photos in public places, especially if I'm alone. It's a safety thing, right? For sure. I've had dudes follow me into public restrooms at the airport. Yep, like, I believe so it. why start it? Because if you do one, then everybody gets curious who is this girl next to you. Everybody's looking down at their phone. They're searching you. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in an, an airport with 30 people watching my scenes. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> For free. There's <laughs> children. Damn it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. So, yeah, th- that will come back. But I'm just really grateful, right? And right. you, I kept great connections with my friends uh during the, the downtime whether it be facetime texting phone calls like i probably talked to my friends more during that two-year span than we ever talked because we made time for it we could right. sit on a facetime till our phone battery died you know mm-hmm. so there's that uh real excited about releasing my second book and getting ready to read the audio version so yeah. that will be out my second book i'm glad you read it first yes because i became a better writer so after the release of my first book i am I did a reading challenge for myself where I read a book a week for a year Mm. and I surpassed it and I actually read 63 books in one year. And so I just decided to do it because everyone kept telling me like, if you read more, you'll be a better writer. And then I went back and looked at my book and I was like, Oh, this sucks. You got better the second time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this one, I packaged the stories up better, you know, learning how to do segments with my seven years with Sirius XM. Once you learn to do radio, you kind of even can speak better. You speak oh, in yeah. more segments. Like when you interview somebody that does shows as opposed to somebody who doesn't, you know what's going to be a perfect clip. Right over here, Goat is like, oh, we're clipping that. Yep. Oh, we're clipping that. Yep. So I'm excited about those things and just getting back out and seeing my people and together, seeing Mike. the Hold world together. just <laughs> living again. Hold together, Hold together, bro. <laughs> Hold it together. Hold please, together, Mike. Please. Here's some water. Here's some water. There. Splash it, on, there splash there. it on your face. Yeah. <laughs> splash it on your face. Like eyebrows raised. Like <laughs> um, yes, uh, so I did start reading the book. Um, didn't be able to get to finish it yet. No, we but got, you got through the, yeah. the, 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 the yeah. heart-pumping beginning, right? Yes. I'm like, way to start off like Tarantino. Like, boom, shots, go. Oh, my God. Now we're going to bring back. Okay. Flowery roses. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold up, wait a minute. I got to reread the page a couple times just to like. And that's when you're, I, you, I know I have a good read in my hand. I have to keep reading. Like, okay, I really want to dissect the information that was put for, put in front of me right now. So we're going to try to like do this in the kind of same sense how I'm reading and getting to know Lisa. Ann. I'm going to go to 
getting out of the adult film industry, we're going to start there. That transition and in getting into media, it wasn't sunshines or roses. It was a lot of like, there was a lot of issues. There was a lot of turmoil, a lot of harassment going on. So go into that for the viewers that have not yet read like the life back yet. Yeah, the life back's going to take you on a journey that will be heart thumping as the open thumping. Uh, thumping because that's what it really was like and it took me time to understand why it was that way. When it comes from me starting with Sirius XM, that was 2013 and I waited until I signed my second contract to decide I was going to retire from doing adult films. Mm. And the adult film world was so great for me for so many years. First of all, I got to travel and see the world. I shot movies in different countries and got to work in on sets with beautiful people who didn't speak the same language but could communicate through sex. Right. Like the experiences I had, I'm so grateful for. But the business started to really evolve, especially here we come, the internet. That mm -hmm. changed the amount of content that was needed. Then the type of scenes, like it just became, you know, it went from being a MILF, which was awesome because you were like hooking up with the hot pool guy. Right. It was simple, right? Who doesn't guy want that? Shows up, plumber yeah. shows up, and they're all hot. And you're a hot woman that has a beautiful house, you know, and you're just lounging around in your silk robe all day. That was like fantasy land, amazing. Right. Where's that life at? Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's that, in the yeah. valley on set. And I can tell you all the houses that are best for it, but it's not real. <laughs> that letter. <laughs> but in I'm my like, life, you know. Yeah, that came, that stems from like the uh, Desperate Housewives yes, television show, like exactly. all those, all those like um uh, soap opera type. Yep. Dramas kind of went to the fantasy. It just expanded upon that and really showed you the other side of that. And you nailed that because in my first book, The Life I Write, the MILF category came about it when went. Desperate Housewives came about. It skyrocketed. Boom, yeah. overnight. Yep. Then it became a little bit weird and everybody wanted to do the stepmom step thing, which... I don't know why. It got a little young. weird there. Yeah. <laughs> In my head, I would just say every time somebody would ask me, because I tried a couple, but I felt so uncomfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, let me tell you about the stepmom thing. There's this behind the scenes things most people don't know about. They hire some schlep off of Craigslist to pay your fake hunt husband because they don't want to pay a real performer his scene rate. Mm -hmm. This guy's going to have to be there all day. So they find some tool for like a hundred bucks that will sit there and pretend he's your husband. And then okay. this, the performer is the stepson. Well, I don't want people in the world think I'm married to that guy. Right. You know what I mean? So in my head, I'd be looking at that guy across the room thinking, man, I got to play the role. That guy is my <laughs> husband. Oh my, and I know that's crazy that it even matters because right. it's all fantasy land, but it did. So there's that guy, and usually they want that guy kind of sitting in and watching. That's weird. When you have somebody that's mm. not in your world, like you're comfortable oh, with everybody okay. in the wrestling community being in your space, right? Yeah, right. But once an outsider comes in, the vibe changes, right? Very true. You're a little paranoid. You're more paranoid about your stuff. You know, for me, it was always like my bag, my purse. I would lock all that stuff in my car. Mm -hmm. In the valley, it's 110 degrees out, and I'm putting everything in my car because right. now we have a random on set that some producer mm -hmm. met from Craigslist, okay? Like, I'm not being yeah. judgy, but I am. Right. So <laughs> then there's that, that element, then he's watching. And so also I would ask the director, like, are you telling me that young men want to have sex with the same woman their father does? Because to me, I have a problem with that. Why do they want to share that, can I say vagina? This is, I know it's YouTube, oh, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is Lisa Ann experience. I don't want to make you work. So to me, that was like in my head. And I also thought about what it's like to be a stepmom. And is this something stepmoms want to be facing when they're marrying a man that has a teenage young boy? Like, are we carrying on this thought process and making it somewhat acceptable? And then from there, it kind of got into a lot more aggressive scenes because the internet just got bored. Mm -hmm. And we just kept feeding this content that was like mm -hmm. every day on set, I'd have to say to even a performer I really liked that I knew, I would have to remind him because I only shot three or four times a month. I was on the road feature dancing. I was doing events. I was doing, you know, all these other things. I never, shooting was never my main income. So it was something I did. And I would have to remind these men after they didn't see me for a month, like, hey, Please don't bruise me. Please don't choke me. Please don't smack me. Please don't spit in my face. But that's what the view, But they were so, the, and it wasn't yeah. their fault, right? Every other director was telling him like, do this, do this, do this. And also as a male performer, they get a little bit numb to the whole thing. So they've got to kick things up a notch to keep their edge, right? Mm -hmm. And my hack was always like, yo, we'll make out. Cause that's something they normally don't want to shoot. Making out is very intimate. Mm -hmm. And when you make out and you're passionate with somebody, you can help them get their edge back. That was always my thing. So at the same time, all these things were happening. I signed my second contract with Sirius XM and I decide, you know what? 
this is going to be it for me. I'm going to shoot a bunch of movies to release in the future. I'll have them coming out for about a year after I retire. I'll have my passive income coming this. 2018, I had already started using OnlyFans. So I was shooting like behind the scenes on set. I owned my product, so I knew I'd be able to recycle it on OnlyFans right. down the road, all of these things. And when I went to retire, I decided to do it my own way. I told no one. I posted a handwritten letter on my Facebook. And that was the beginning of war that then stemmed to, again, I made a bad joke. You'll, you'll, you've probably read about that. Yes, I made I a bad yep. joke on Twitter. I didn't tag anybody, but I got cancel cultured for it. So the industry retaliated against me because they were no longer going to make money off of me. That's the only way I can justify it. Whether it was performers that I paid to work for me or whether it was people that were paying me and getting to use my name, I announced my retirement publicly. So everyone felt like everyone's going to know every scene we have of hers is old. And mm. she should have told us first, but where do you start? What's the pecking order? Do right. you go to your distributor? Like I own my product. Do I go to browsers? Do I go to, you know, do I go to these? No, it's my decision. Just the process of owning your own product and stuff. What is the lengths you have to go through that? Cause like as a musician owning your masters is like going through hell, especially if you're signed to a label. Mm -hmm. How is it? Um, you trying to get ownership of. So your I own my stuff first and then found my label. So what I did was okay. I created my content. Then I went to distributors and said, I will license this product with you. You will be able to sell it to international deals, to cable, to DVD. I get to keep it for the internet. Like I made deals. So mm. I, I stockpiled my stuff first. So, so you made, you made your name before even like signing a contract. Yeah. Well, much. in the very beginning, oh. I was okay. only shooting for other companies, but then okay. I, you know, I saved the money to start producing my own because a good movie, uh, to put out a full movie, four to five scenes can cost you anywhere from 20 to $25,000, maybe 30, depending on your talent. And actual good yeah. full length. Uh, it takes yeah. a long time to make that money back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but you own it. So it's kind of the same battle where it's like you're sitting on that money for a really long time and you had to bank a quarter of a million dollars to really put out a good series of movies and decide, I'm not going to see a return on this for like 10 years. If I went and worked for other companies, mm -hmm. they paid me a great rate. So I would go to work, get my money and go home. But then they could use that content forever and I never got to see any residual yep. income. So yeah. I, yep. I decided that I was going to bank my money from other companies and then produce my own stuff so I would own it forever and then I'd be able to release it. And when I left, it was just interesting to see the responses from people. There were producers that reached out to me and said, hit me up when you're broke and desperate. Oh, um, God. There were people that I was always cool with that said horrible things. And I was like, oh, my God. I felt like 25 years of my life was erased. I felt like mm -hmm. anybody I'd ever been good to, I made money for, I made money with, just really turned in a way that was was painful it was a hard way to leave a business yeah do you find that looking at your time right you're doing that and you have people that you, you know, in, in the lines of work and what you're doing you find out who really has your back in life when you start to do what's happy for you mm -hmm. happiness for you and what you plan on doing for yourself you publicly retire you say you know what i'm done yeah i did everything i wanted to do and then you have people that you think that is family friends they turn their back on you. They they say, oh, you know, you, you, you're you this, you're doing that. So when that happened, what changed in you? Something had to switch because now you're in a whole other field. So did you go into the other field like more guarded or did you say, you know what, anybody and anything that did me wrong and that I'm not even going to deal with it. I'll talk about it, but it is what it is. And I'm just going to move forward. How did you handle that when that happened? I didn't hold anyone in my new world responsible for my past world because right. I was in my forties and I was a responsible enough human and, and mentally aware enough to say, Facts. I can't judge mm -hmm. these people who have never wronged me. The sports community was so welcoming to me. Everybody yep. had been so kind. I can't, that was actually my pacifier when I was going through the darkness of letting go of this tragic breakup. Mm. My sports people were actually like, that Monday night show I did every Monday was my lifeline. Like I lived for that show. I got mm. excited to do it. I would work hard to, to study everything in the meantime and set up interviews and do those things. So I allowed that to prop me up when I was falling down from the other. But it does affect your trust level with people. Right. It's per you're permanently scarred a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're scarred a little bit, but you become closer with your actual people. Like people fell out of my life by the hundreds. Yeah. And next thing you know, you have this really small handful of people. people. Yeah. 
And you remember the expression my dad always said to me, if you could count your friends on one hand, you have a good life. And I remember thinking to him like, that's lame. Like I want to have a lot of friends, you know? (laughs) But when you go through something dark, you're a very small group of people come to you, they help you. That was when I put myself under the reading challenge. Yeah. Like I was depressed and I knew I didn't drink alcohol for the whole two years till I got, for, till I felt like I was over it. Right. Alcohol is a depressant. I was like, I'll smoke my weed. I'll do my thing, but I will not drink. Um, and I only hung around with people that had a positive outlook. I removed myself from any negativity and I had to fight it. It was a dark time for me. Um. So with the social media harassment that came with that like that was pretty rough for me reading it on that side especially because that started bleeding into the real life aspect i'll go into that a little bit for anybody who hasn't seen seen or heard about it yet so i cracked a joke on twitter which i shouldn't have um and i didn't tag the person the joke i'd seen something on instagram and i was bored at an airport and i cracked a joke and the joke started this bloodbath of people banding on and saying, what a horrible person I am. That bled over into producers and people that had all of my contact information from my model releases, releasing everything about me on the internet, from my driver's license number, my social, my mother's date and name, my parents, where they lived, like everything about my entire life was shared with the world. I started getting death threats on a regular basis. Mm. Um, My family got harassed to the point, I do not have a relationship with my family and one thing led to me getting stronger with my family and you'll read that. Like right, right. this was kind of the catalyst that made me kind of just be like, you know what? You aren't there for me. Let's just get this all out and open it. Or do we have a relationship or not? And that's a whole nother thing, but it didn't stop. And the very first night, the very first death threat came in on my landline. I sell a landline. Don't make fun of me. Cause when I tell this story, young people are like, you had a landline. Like, I'm like, what? I did because it was, I lived in a building in Studio City, where the only way you could buzz in delivery people was through the landline. It wasn't compatible with a cell phone yet, okay? It was outdated. So I had a landline. <laughs> so this phone up, this phone comes in on my cell phone, but the number it's registering from is my landline. And so mm. what that means is somebody's using a phone inside my house to call me. Mm. And I had a friend with me. I had just had breast reduction surgery, which was the first thing I did when I retired. I paid for it Mm. six months before I retired. I was like, I don't want to walk around these big boobs anymore. They made me money, but like, I'm good. That was a 30, uh, uh, it was uncomfortable. I couldn't run. I could barely do things working out. I could never play golf. (laughs) There were a lot of things I couldn't do. So I was like, first thing I'm doing day two after retiring, it's going in for surgery, which I did. So I had friends staying with me in shift, looking after me, making sure I wasn't taking the wrong medication, all this. And I had a young girlfriend with me from Baltimore. Um, and I see her, I see the message. I tell her to go stand by the cameras. I hit the panic on the alarm. I go to my kitchen, I get a knife. I stand in front talking to the alarm company very quietly. It was New Year's Eve. The cops came in no time, like five minutes. They were all young. They were all like rookies because it's New Year's Eve. And so they all come storming into my place, guns drawn. I have four floors. So one crew is going up one way, one crew is on the main floor, one crew is going downstairs, and then there's a cop in the hallway, two cops talking to us. And at one moment, I hear one of the cops downstairs scream, is anybody supposed to be down here? And I realize, oh shit, I had a cardboard cutout of Shaquille O'Neal in my basement <laughs> behind the washing machine to scare people when they came in my house. It was huge, it was life size, you know? Suspects getting aggressive, pop, pop, pop. And, and I was like, <laughs> There's a, there's a cutout of Shaquille O'Neal down there. I loved it because I would talk to Shaq every time I'd leave my place because when you open the door, he'd be there. I'd get peace out. I'd be back. But when my friends would come in, I'd close the door. Every time it got yeah. then, it made me laugh. You ever got so to I'm actually like, meet Shaq and tell him about this? Uh, Yes. I knew it. Yes. Something told me like she told Shaq about this. Yes. Uh, so briefly, it like Why you calm, do that to me? Why you put me in the basement, Lisa? It, but, but it was so <laughs> tall. It was like, but the long and the short of it. So once that happened... The cops realize there's no one in my house. Now we're laughing about the shack thing. That was our icebreaker. We get on the hallway. One of the cops said to me, he's like, you know, you've lived here for 10 years and we've never had a problem. Mm. This has to come from what's going down right now on social media. Yeah. I was like, "Uh, how did you know about this? He goes, well, everybody knows. And like, we look at these things when we're, and it's my real name, Lisa Ann. So, you know, so he said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen right now. Can you handle mental warfare? I mean, mental warfare. I said, yeah, I think I can. He goes, nobody's going to hurt you because people don't toy with you to hurt you. They just come and they hurt you. If somebody wanted to hurt you, they'd have been in your house and they wouldn't have called you. They would have just come down to your couch and killed you. So look at it like that. Game on. 
This is going to be a repeated thing. We're going to give you a detective. We're probably going to be here a lot. Pre prepare your family, mm -hmm. prepare your friends. Um, this is going to go on until it doesn't. And I was like, like, what? This is my life. Is, it, this, is somebody telling you this is just the start? This, and it was. That's a really horrifying thing because you're not mentally prepared for the long game. No. All you're looking at is the end. And it was a year. Ugh. And it was a year of absolute torture. At the time, I had a studio apartment in New York City, and I felt safer there because I had a doorman and everything yeah. else. But I couldn't fly there because I just had surgery. I couldn't fly for a month. So I had to stay at my L.A. place. When mm. I'd be at my New York place, somebody would prank phone to call the cops that I was dead inside my place. They would have to kick my door down. Then I'd have to come back and buy a new door. Lord. You know, like all the things my building went through, my neighbors went through. Um, it was a constant, and it, and it, and it was... It was horrifying. It made me a shut in. I got rid of my studio apartment in New York, moved back to LA and just didn't leave other than to go to the gym for a year of my life. If my friends wanted to see me, they had to come to me. Mm -hmm. I was so afraid to leave my house. I was every floor, knives, weapons everywhere. Every time I made a move and it, it changed me. It changed me in a way, but I, I just kept hearing what that cop said. I kept talking to the detective and I just kept saying to myself, like, this is mental warfare. What's great is once you make it through something like this. <laughs> now when random stuff happens, I just look at people, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna take more than that. <laughs> okay. You look at home. That's all you got You're now? You're gonna <laughs> run at me and try and rob me right. on the streets in New York City? Come on. Like, come on, you, come you, you're not on. working hard enough. You know, I'm right you, here. Yes, yes, right? yes. I'm, come on. So, then you look at horror movies a little different too. Like, ah, wrong move. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. But it was jarring for the people in my life. <laughs> I realized I was strong enough to deal with it because it was happening to me. But my friends yeah. were kind of like, look, my best friend has my location services on everywhere I go every day of my life, checks in. I, I don't text her for four hours. I get a text proof of life. She's still scarred. Like how exhausting is that? Just like oh, it was horrible. Real. Yeah, like even it just was to, horrible. Because like we take that kind of stuff for granted. We kind of like, oh, I want to go to the store. Up, get up, take my keys, go. Like you, some people walk, you know. And if you're in New York and stuff, and we take those kind of things for granted, how like free we actually really have it until all that freedom is taken away from you. And you always feel like you have to be guarded, and there's like somebody behind you. You got to worry about who's on your phone, who's on your, who's at your house, who knows where your house is, who knows where. Like your sister, brother, mom, aunt, uncle, all these like that's that freedom. We don't t we don't we really don't appreciate it enough until we give to we it, it, not it just it's gone. It belongs to somebody else. Yeah, somebody somebody, you know? somebody owned me for a year yeah, of my life. Right, they took my life from me. And right. you don't know who they are, but they know who everything about you. And I you. was getting to the point where I would talk to the harassers on the phone because <clears throat> I really wanted to try and figure out what they looked like. Like I was getting into this, you know. Yeah. I, at the time, I started driving to this Sirius XM studio in LA and I got so scared to drive there. I only made it like three things and I bought the device that connects with Sirius to do my shows from my house because I was that afraid, even though they would have security come out and get me. I was like, I just can't be in my car right now. Like I just can't be anywhere right now. That's how heavy it was. It was exhausting and it was I tried to maybe go to the store or something, and then I think I heard a voice of somebody that I heard on one of these prank phone calls leaving me messages, and it was just, I would just leave the cart and just go home. So I just surrendered, and I just completely learned how to be still for a year of my life, which prepared me for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Made it easier for me to go through that than other people. Oh, um, we were losing our minds. Uh, and Not in I, Florida. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is nothing. I can go out and ride a city bike. I couldn't even get outside for a year. So I have a question for you. Time, even though you still are now, but there was a time, a period of time when maybe if you go not even not too long ago, that you were one of one of the most <laughs> talked about and famous trending people in the world and for, 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 you know, for, for years, for years, for years, going back to, I thought you were Sarah Palin. The facts. For a long you gotta, time. You got to really think about it. I'm 33, so when I moved here, I was like you're, 23 You're my old. key demographic. Yeah. yeah totally, like, <laughs> got him. Like, got we him. grew up together. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> what you doing in there, boy? <laughs> but playing uh, video games. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Nobody playing video games. Yeah, playing play uh, Getaway. Yeah, yeah. Um, The election, yeah. Yeah, the election. So, like, how is that transition now? Do you feel like as you being one of the most popular women in the world, you know, what you chose to do for a living. Do you feel like now you yearn for just like a normal life? Just like a normal, regular life? Do you, like that? now that you're sitting back and you're like, you know what, looking back at it, 
I'm really enjoying this time now where I could just go ride my bike outside. I could just live my I could just live my life now. Or do you sometimes look back at it and say, you know what, that was a good time. I lived my life and I'm and you know, and it was a time where I was one of the most famous people in the world, but I'm good with what I did. How do you feel about that? Because especially a woman in your position, because you don't really get to talk to many women. This is a there's a lot to unpack here. This right. is a very good question. First of all, my life now is still very intertwined with my life from the past because you have to take into consideration that there's a new feverish masturbator born every second. Right. So some young men don't know that I'm not doing that anymore and they're just coming on to Lisa Ann. Mm -hmm. So Lisa Ann still has these waves of new yep. followers and people. So it and they is, got cravings, man. It embodies me. Uh, I was 2007, man. But I will say this. They, these 2020, mm, these got my, cravings. My last couple of dance bookings, I was on stage fantasizing about the normal life that I have now. As normal as it could ever be to be me, mm -hmm. I have it now. Where I okay. just wanted to make my own food. You know what it's like to be on the road and you're always dying for food and it's never exactly what you mm -hmm. want. It, to certain cities, you're not going to get a vegetable that's fresh. I was just in St. Louis. Like yeah. Starbucks is the only place I can I'm get there this something weekend. fresh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go get those boxes that are already made of food because everything else is fried or has cheese on it or what have yep. you. So the normalcy that I'm getting is like when I'm not doing events. So I get to still live Lisa Ann for these fringe activities, right? Meeting my fans at gigs, doing events here and there. But then when I'm home, I'm in bed every night at nine. I'm up like yeah. 5.30, I watch the sunrise from my apartment, I go to the gym, sauna, nothing's a hurry. You know, other than doing mm -hmm. my podcast and the things that I do, like I get to be home. I get to have friends over for dinner. I get to be a part of their weekend events that I always missed when I was feature dancing. Like I'm more present in a normal life than ever and I love it, you but at the same you time. That you know what made you ask that question? What? You didn't come in here with big security. Good no, I knew I could trust you guys. You, you didn't come in here with like, you know, and that's trust, that's trust and instincts, you know, and, and just seeing you come in here with, you know, uh, a whole lot of things to say or what not to say. You came in here as yourself and you felt yep. comfortable and you feel comfortable. And that's something that I noticed. I said, you know what, people at that point in life, some people don't let that go. Mm -hmm. Some people are, are live by their, they're like, they're become, I, I hate to say this word, but demonic by that because they're so, they're so scarred by years and years of being that person. Then life is going to switch one day mm -hmm. and you're not going to be that person everybody grows up yep. you're not the you're not the most popular rapper anymore you know well I, yep. when you, you was when i was 15 but i'm 30 with kids now <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't want to rob steal and kill i, I don't, right. don't want to do that so, i did that already yeah absolutely. so <laughs> like so here's one more here's one more question i got about this so you move on now how does that work with your dating life does that change now everybody you have to filter you're like hey, you know is this guy really talking to me or or, or whatever uh, your preference yeah talk to me because of who I am, or do people, I bet people got to go through a filter system. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I would just say this, dating is impossible. It is? Impossible. But I am very lucky. Um, I've had, I've had someone in my life for the last 12 years. <laughs> and my thing was I would never be in a serious relationship while I was shooting. So mm -hmm. we had a casual relationship, but like he's always been my person. And you know, if you're a person that like has people in your life, multiple people, one of them is always your number one. Like you drop everything for them. Even though you're not in a committed relationship, they are your person. Yeah. He is yeah. the person that from the second I met him, my first thought was, man, I hope he could deal with what I do for a living. Cause like, I love this man. Like, and I told all my friends, I'm like, I would cut my arm off right now to marry him. Like that's how I felt after just meeting him. It's a vibe. It's just how we connect. So now we are serious and now we are in an exclusive relationship. And now I just got to see him. I just flew back from LA to come see this, to see you guys. Uh, he travels a lot. So either I see him in New York or I meet him somewhere, but I did try dating in between this 12 years. Mm -hmm. Cause of course he wanted me to see what it was like when I retired, I wasn't shooting scenes like, Hey, you didn't have any normalcy. Like you should still be living your life. You just... Dudes are weird. Man. Very unselfish man. Okay, dudes, that. he's the best Very human unselfish. in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, I would do anything for him. But dudes are weird because you're right. The process of like, <laughs> we had a we had a we had a moment last year where <laughs> I was mad at him for something because I and I'm working on this. I'm I, because I love him so much. I think I do push him away at times because I'm so afraid of it. Uh, so I dated someone else who for six months I thought was somewhat normal. Um, and then I find out he has a living girlfriend and I'm like, oh, this is what dating is like. Dudes are not only weird, but if they're not weird, 
They're lying. They're just lying. So I don't know how she got there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were about to say he had a shrine of you in his closet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, no. I'm like, would I you got her finally? I, what, <laughs> so who would you rather be- deal with? Would you rather deal with weird or crazy? Oh, God. Crazy about you or weird? That's so tough, right? Because crazy about you. I choose you. weird. Yeah. Cause weird, crazy they are down you. for you. They, they always going to be there. Right, because crazy about you, they might be cutting a locket of your hair while yeah. you're sleeping. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They might be selling your shit and you don't know it. They yeah. might be in your panty drawer, you know? Yeah, Not some, for you guys. Like, you know, you're stuck. Yeah, some people are like, oh, you, this is my crazy about you. I'm like, they don't want crazy about you because they, that, that, you lose, pack you lose shit. Like, yeah. people, they, they, they damage stuff. They, like, take, like, uh, you and walk home. And my guy has never raised his voice to me. He's ever swore at me. Mm-hmm. He's never been disrespectful to me. Right. Um, um, Crazy dude yeah, going. Yeah, he's, like, he's, you found him. I yeah. know. <laughs> now I just him. have to love him and treat him so well because he's always treated me well. But I was, you know, when he read my book cover to cover, his thing was, oh, now I understand why things got real slippery for us after like 2015. He goes, I, you were telling me these things in snippets. He's like, but reading it all at one time, like, yeah, your your whole head was a mess. So I'm not going to take anything that happened mm-hmm. personally during that time frame because I know what you were. What a man. That's, that's the understanding of a weird person. <laughs> yeah, because like your friends will tell you he's weird, but they love the crazy guy. Like the crazy dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bob's awesome. I Dave, went man. on dates, so I don't, yeah. I, in my dating time, I wouldn't have sex with somebody on a first date. Because that's a booty right. call, right? And you have awesome booty calls that are trusted, that have already been vetted, that have gone through multiple people. Like, I would have friends that would be like, hey, you have a friend that you trust. You know? But a date is like, someone's like, this is a real thing. So I wouldn't have sex. Dudes would email me the next day chewing me out because I didn't have sex with them. And they were so offended. And this was a normal thing. Mm-hmm. And it became a thing like my girlfriend's like, yo, just go out on a date, don't have sex with the guy and read us the messages the next day. They would lose their shit. Like you'll have sex with random dudes for money, but you wouldn't have sex Who's with saying me. These I'm like, oh, Who's yes. saying these are random? Who's saying these are random? Yes. Who's saying anything these are random people? And I'm like, well, I just wasn't ready to have sex. I, for, for what men have to understand is most women don't don't want to take a guy back to where they live oh, no. until they get to know them. <laughs> and we're just as afraid to go to where he lives until they get to know them. So it's not a really as much about the sex. It's about, you got to be it's thinking the safety. Yeah, yeah. Safety first. Stranger danger. Yeah. We thought this, but was I like, saved those know. emails cause they're fun to look back at and laugh. <laughs> so what we have on display here is a email from Mike, the goat. No, no, well, we don't. Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but I will lead into exhibit a, exhibit a. <laughs> Boom. Dudes do better. So that's a perfect segue. He's doing Ooh, my job. Oh, well, fire. So <laughs> I feel like those experiences have definitely morphed and melted over into this. So describe Dudes Do Better podcast with, uh, you know. Dudes Do Better is a haven for women and men who know how to haven. act. And it is a school day for those who don't. And I'll say from some of the emails that I've been reading from people or interactions on Twitter. I've gotten emails in response that have said things like, you made me think about how I respond to content creators. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Mm -hmm. There's no need, if you don't have anything that adds value, you can just thumbs up the post. You can just hit that like button. You don't need to tell me you need to be balls deep in me. You know what I mean? All of that is unnecessary banter. And the guys that say those things on Twitter, Facebook, and IG, I go to their page and their banner is always them with their family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my best response is let me know when your daughter's doing porn because I'll make sure she has the best gangbang ever. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to read the comment section that we have on this when it drops. These guys are some horny bastards, man. Because I, I don't read the comments of our own podcast. That's po- so smart. Yeah. I, I don't read them. I'm, I'm I usually delete. hear it from you guys. Yeah. He does it. I usually try and to you, catch And you them delete ones that are unnecessary or awful right off the bat. And you don't and you don't share them with him, right? Yeah. You, yeah, because I'm like. Uh, it's but, bad energy. Yeah. And it, I don't want to, like, second guess what I have to ask or my posture, my, like, Oh man, he talks too low. Now I'm talking like this because that one dude. Head. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not trying head. to do that. Yeah, so. so. So what's something? So what's another thing? Like, what's something that another, like, dude, like, specifically men? What is something that you feel like that a man could do that's better? So just, just be hey, honest, as a woman. What? Where are we failing? Like, where are we failing? At? As men. Okay, first, one Besides word. Besides everywhere. Listen. Mm. Are you listening? Because when you listen, huh? a woman tells you what she likes. <laughs> 
what her favorite color is, what her flowers are. You know, like one of the beefs I had with my dude for years is he always sent me roses and my favorite flower are lilies. And so it was finally when I denied roses and said, I love lilies. They last longer. I don't have to clean the water. They don't die as fast. They're not as expensive. Don't spend this much see, money on something that's dying in three days. See, as a man, we heard flowers. <laughs> that's what we heard the like, noun. We heard the noun, not that. That's all we heard. We heard the noun, not that. Why, why is your go to roses? Red roses to me are like, I'm sorry. I don't know why, but every movie when listen, a guy did something wrong, he sends the girl red roses. Because we listen to another dude. He's like, what is should I get? I don't know, nigga, roses. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what we do. And that's how I end up. Man, hey, Teezy, what should I get? Man, like, man, here's some roses. We, we, we process things as nouns. Person, you. Place, the flower place. Thing, roses. Yeah. That's how we just. But I'm hungry. All dinner. The adjectives <laughs> like, and the adjectives <laughs> and the commas. Right. We're too good with that. Women are good with that. But then when it comes to the nouns, they'd be like, oh, okay, what are we arguing about? See, it's, it's, it's like reverse. Yeah. We like flowers, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, she said flowers. Red, roses, okay, these are 30 bucks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's go. Love yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's could, how we process. Could you do something special today? I vacuumed. What? Come on, like, come on. Yeah. What, what are we about, doing? So, we, that, we're happy. We, we this happy is we normal. Bop. We happy we bop. This is normal. We're happy like said, we bopped the floor. She's wonder if we use Mr. Clean. Yeah, I'm like, ah, Lord. You know what I'm saying? You're right, you're right. She's like, worried about the brand. We're what like, did you do it with? Is what she asked. Exactly. You said. Yeah, that fabuloso that been sitting in the back corner of the cabinet. I use that. That's only nope. for the garage, baby. What? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. This is so true. Uh. It's so true. This is how I'd go. But listen, <laughs> like right it. now I'm doing it. I'm trying to flip the script a little bit. I'm doing, I'm collecting best date ever stories so I can help inspire others to go on great dates. <laughs> and a date doesn't have to be expensive. Your girl likes nature. Take her to a park, go out, have a picnic, like take a walk, do something. But I'm learning a lot about people through great dates of what I'm reading through these emails, which hopefully inspires, but it's the listening. I want to make an opposite to this thing. Like, Dudes do better. Women, just accept this. We are. We trying. We I. Somebody said. We I. I truly felt meant to. Somebody truly told me this. The relationship between men and women we is between it's it's Bruce Banner and Incredible Hulk, and we're Hulk. Yeah. Build building smash. <laughs> That's how we are. We are like okay. Building, and, some, and, women, and sometimes and, I, yo, go ahead. And, and women, the other side, y'all y'all the thinkers. Y'all like, well, you know this. This is this, and Hulk is like, you know, like when I'm angry. And he's just mad. <laughs> and we're just, and we're just, we're very simple. We're Hulk. Or, or, we're gonna smash something. It's a very good way to look at it. And, and women are just I like. I take things a lot less intentionally now. Like, yeah. this is not. Do you think it's our friends, television, and society that makes oh. us overanalyze oh, yeah. men yeah. and yeah. make it more oh, yeah. complicated? Yeah, I think there's. Looking such... back, I should have never been mad he was sending roses. Yeah, like, I think you put. I think women put <laughs> men on such a pedestal that's just unreachable. Like, why? Don't put us up there so high. We're okay. not gonna. We're we're never going to achieve that. Okay. We're reactionary creatures. We're and, react. and I think women need to sacrifice for men sometimes, sometimes, some occasions, just a little bit. I'm finally learning that. Yeah, there's, there's sacrifice. <laughs> like we, we have to provide. We go above and beyond to try to provide. And women have to accept sometimes. Right. We're not going to be that guy. You got like, I'm sorry. Like they were just going to be. This this is what I do. This is why like some like I'm going to play my games. You say all right, we we got to go here. Make sure you stop off here. I'm like, uh huh, got it, cool, and. <laughs> Two out of those five things might be all we might miss, and you got to be understanding. Two out of, five. Uh, two out of them five is going to be missing. Good average, probably that's, right. That's a, I'm shooting above five hundred. If I'm Steph Curry, that's a listening man. We, hey, <laughs> yo, two out of five is a listening man. Hey, I, dog, <laughs> yo, that's an all star. Hey, <laughs> for real. crazy gets zero for five. I'm letting you know that right now, You're right? Because right. it's all about him. Like, hey, yes. I don't want to do it. No, why do you look at me like this? Why do we have this in the house? This is dumb. You don't understand me. Ah, go away. That's crazy, guy. <laughs> you know what my homie started doing? What? what oh, tell. every time she came down, she said, she'll come down from the says, "Hey, baby." He just puts the voice recorder on. Smart. So that's planning ahead. Uh huh. And then he goes back and listens like, uh -huh. to. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> now we have to grow. Now we have to grow to learn on like shit. I can't get my ear. What's she saying? Hold up, hold up. But it was, <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> what was that? He's that been. And I swear, my dog, my dog, been like four for five most of the time. Four for five. Like, he been like four, four for five. five. I remember getting extra ass lately. Like four, four for five, four five bro. Oh, like he's because oh he, he listening. She's right. He listening. You four, do get bro. extra ass when you listen. I'm telling you, you get extra yeah, ass. You, when you bro, listen. bro. I'll tell you what. You know why I knew I was right with this stuff. Even Vision from Wanda Vision was messing up. 
That is a he knows everything in the universe, and he still came home and messed up. In every sitcom, he was messing up in the seventies. He was messing up in the eighties. He messed up in the nineties. He messed up in the two thousand, and then he died. Yeah. If, if, if Vision with an Infinity Stone in his in his freaking forehead can't get it right, don't expect Al who sells shoes <laughs> at Sneaker Villa. So it's also about <laughs> gift giving. Like guys seem to, you know, guys in general seem to be a little bit off when it comes to the perfect gift. Am I right? Women are better with gifts yeah. to me. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Women oh, are yeah. better with gifts. Oh, yeah. Women oh, yeah. are better with gifts. Because guys, we'd be like, I didn't ask for this, but this is amazing. <laughs> women ladies are like, I didn't ask for this women at all. Hit you, <laughs> women to hit you with a with a fifteen page photo album, a picture you didn't even know you took. <laughs> right? Right? The the right? moments, <laughs> the cherish of life. <laughs> and y'all didn't remember when y'all took that picture. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Said, I, <laughs> this literally was a gift in the anniversary. I'm like, she's like, remember this? I'm like, huh? And you'd be like, oh, this is. It was great. It was great. And in the back, all you got is them damn chocolates and that one little damn necklace that you just, you like, oh, this ain't enough. So what you get me? Nothing? <laughs> None? Nah, nah. We, we going to the movies tonight, man. <laughs> so I was complaining to a friend of mine that uh, my, because uh, like my, uh, a roommate of mine, love you, bro, uh, broke my uh, favorite Batman va um, tea mug. Oh. And that was just, I was just like talking. I was like, man, so and so broke my tea mug. Da 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 da. And she knew where it was because I was like, oh yeah, I got it from so and so, so and so. And next time we hung out, she actually gifted me. She's like, here, take that. Because she was listening, and she knew that that hurt you, that that was broken. And are you still with this girl? Uh, we're cool. We're like, we're like, <laughs> so, oh, no. Oh, no. do yeah. better. So, You're on a break. You're on a break. No, 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 no. You're on a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know why? But that she's like. But that was sweet of her. That showed you something about her that you'll always respect her because she see, was listening. It's sweet. See, I hear treachery. I I, th I hear treacheries afoot because now when they get an argument later, she's like, "Oh, remember that goddamn Batman T mug I got you when you didn't ask for it with your bitch ass friend broke it? Yeah, where's that? Yeah, I see her treachery. I hear ammunition for a later freaking argument that's going to get him worse than when the Batman T mug broke in the first damn place. Okay, you can't bring up a gift though that you gave a guy. You already oh, gave no. it. Oh, well, hey. We're not Yet. together, but like, Yet. we're cool. Treachery is like, afoot. Like, I would always look out for There's no restraining order well. either way, is what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> if I can't even tell the homies that story, but the homies gonna be like, so, uh, yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, about the game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, how come those aspects of scenes are not put into adult films? The, I, that's why I'm like, I would be where way more. Where, yeah, where the, where the arguments? Where the pettiness? I know, but you ever seen some of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies where they really try to shoot like that? <laughs> That's more real than like. I'll, sometimes I'll be like, okay, where's the like the scene, the scenario, reaching for the the jelly in the bottom drawer that turns that doesn't turn into an argument anywhere. Be like, that would be great. That see, would be. That, that's that where I'd be, be like, you know what? See who fights better. I will say this. So you know, guys come at me in a strange way, and of course, everyone thinks they can have sex with me. So everyone shoots their shot because they've been watching tons of footage. And so my best. Oh, friend, they know your moves. My best friend always says, like, you should have done some movies where you said no. No one's ever seen you say no, Lisa. Of course they think you're going to be down. That's her Roll whole credits. thing. And I'm like, no one would have ever paid me to say no. She's like, but I'm just saying, they only know you always were down. You always Damn. were down. So there's that. You know what's crazy? Let's add something to that too because what you, got? you think about it and you're like, you know what? If you really look at that, you say, you know, let's go to real life. You know, let's start the same way 20 times like we do every night. The same way. Do it the same way. But those movies, they'll never be the same way. No, before the it, scene, you block it out. You look at your workbench, yeah. which is What's either a bed, a uh, kitchen counter, maybe a rock by the pool, a thing. You look at it, then you walk over with your director, your, your talent, and you're like, all right, what are our angles here? What positions? How many positions? Some, some crews will want four or five positions. So when you're selling your stuff internationally, you can't show as much as you can here. For sure. you got to edit it differently for different countries. Mm -hmm. So you, you do an extra position. Is that position why like, certain clothing like, is on still? Yep. Okay. And so you'll get those extra positions in so that you have them, right? So you block it all out. So then you, my first question, the guy is, what's your favorite position to pop from? When he tells me that, I say, we save that for last. Mm, Boom. It's like wrestling. Now we got it. So you, it's just like wrestling. I've been saying it's, this, y'all. It's just like wrestling. 
Just yep. like, you know, we're the pile driver. It. All right. You're blocking it out. Guy has a curve angle, then you know he's got to be on the couch opening up the way that works for his curve, right? You 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 have an injury. Okay, my knees bothering me. Okay, we won't Is be. That doing why the that. knee pads be on sometimes. Prince always wears the knee pads. That's why I'm like, that's that's that's, 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 that's boots, bro. <laughs> that's young. That's oh, love shoes, bro. I told and, you. He, and he has to take his pants off and then put those shoes back on. You know what's the mystery? To, my guy, Prince, to me, the mystery is Prince's feet. None of us have ever seen, ever seen Prince's him? feet. No, because he puts the boots back on. He always has socks on. Oh. We don't oh. know. The mystery would be, and I, I don't oh. know, is he saving it? Starting OnlyFans with feet where he can make he a got ton wet toes, of bro. something, something. In shape, my mouth, bro. Or he's hiding him to make big money later. You know what I mean? Who knows? I, but we, you know what? That's might be genius move right but there. But we've never seen his feet. Wow. And he wears the knee pads, and you cannot, you can beg him as a producer as many times as you want. Like, can you please just take off? He's like, I can't. And now they're established, right? Yeah. You know, even if it's just the foot coming and the girl's laying on the couch, you know it's Prince in the scene. Oh, yeah. Yep. No oh, shoes. Prince Yash, we up in here. Yo, yo, Prince, what up? Yes, yes. You know, it's this thing, and do, it's can, louder. Can other, do you it's, think uh, other guys can get away with that kind of like? No. We no, won't I allow it. I figured. We will I'm like, Prince not got, allow he, it. He got, he got equity in the game, he man. He sure does. Yeah. He, I've been like, I, I've had guys like, they want to wear those like, those shell necklaces and I'm like, that's that's trash. You got to get rid of that. For this <laughs> it's trash. But I wear it in every other team. Like, it's not a thing. You're not Prince. They're not the boots. Forget about yeah. it. Now, let's, let, let me ask you this because this brings us to this point. You're, the guy that you're with, mm -hmm. does he feel any kind of pressure? Does he feel any, does he feel like in order to be romantic with you or even to, to try to be intimate with you. Is there a way that he might have to be real creative? No, see, that's the thing with see, us. That, see, see. That's the thing with us. Since <laughs> the very first time we met, he is the one person that I feel the most comfortable in my own skin with, mm. where I'm just me. It's I almost like, like I'm man. in this world where I don't think about my Bring scenes. Him with it. Bring or, him next time. Or, him or, next or, time, or my please. extracurricular <laughs> things I've done in my life. It's just, I'm just a woman with him. Like nobody makes me feel more like a woman than he does. Mm. And our connection is so strong that it's like, no, we're not looking to block out five positions. Like, but like, you know, a lot of, there are times that I'm the aggressor. Like if he's sleeping, there are times and I do tap and ask for consent and I know eventually he'll wake up. But sometimes I wake up and I want it and I don't get to see him all the time. So, you know, but I always make sure I have consent. He it's knows, so he knows he has to like, <laughs> but uh, no. And, and he doesn't think that way either. He doesn't, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a bizarre thing to be with somebody <laughs> that, and I just told him this by text last night. He is the one person in my life that, there's never a moment in his presence that I feel any judgment towards what I've done, the path that I've taken, the yeah, life I've talk lived. About it. And he wrote back, you know, well, you're self-made. You did what you had to do to get where you are right now in this place where you are. He goes, w what would I have to say about it? You know? Yeah. So like, as I'm just breaching different conversations with my friends, so like, have you ever asked him how he feels about it? He's never made me feel that. But every other guy you know, will bring it up. Even you might not know this. I was married in my twenties. Everyone should try it. I was married. We're still oh, friends. No. Uh, we talk on our wedding anniversary uh, and on holidays. Um, but even he, when he would be mad at me, would bring it up. Well, it's like every guy throws it at you. Yeah. Well, like, and that's you're not going to like if you look at the record books and see Michael Jordan holding every record, you're going to be intimidated and be like, I don't want to go join the NBA. So you're not even going to try. I'm not going to play one on one with him either. I don't no, play, no. Of course. But you're not even going to try to try to like, yeah. like, you're not even going to try to even get in the league. Right. You know? But just but if you take away all that stuff and just play your game, yep. you're not even thinking about that. You're just right. being you. I feel like that's what like you know like man like you probably had the greatest sex of all time of all time. But me go, somebody going into a relationship with you, they're but not, with him, I've had the greatest sex of all time of my whole you life. Made, you, you made the greatest. Something. You made the greatest love feel, of all time. You feel something, right? Like yeah, yeah. But he ain't looking at Jordan and Prince Joshua in the same boat. He's like he's not even trying to achieve yeah. that. Yeah, you know, he's trying to be him, be him, yep. and play his game. You yep. know why? Because he got this. Yeah. yeah. He got her. Like, he got her. He got that. Yeah. See, and that and that's and that's a different ball game. It's different when you get their heart, you get their soul, you get their spirit. Get a woman's spirit, and you know how to oh. obtain a woman's spirit and keep a woman's spirit. That's different. Dude can come out here with fifteen inches. It ain't gonna matter. Nope. But yeah, I know what she like. I know what she like for breakfast, bro. <laughs> Women different, bro. Nope. Women different. They they can shut off in a minute and be like, eh, whatever. Because it's not it's not that it's not that dude. Like I've seen from relationships. I know you know. Just from, from your dating experiences or anything like that, you'd be like, you know what? Women know when they want to say, you know, women know when they want to be with a man. 
in any kind of way. Yep. They yeah. know when they yep. say, okay, this guy's a friend. This, this dude's friend zone. Yep. This yep. Dude's, yep. You know, and they, you guys know that. Yes, we yeah, do. Y'all, y'all, you, y'all utility belt us, man. But what's funny about being in the friend zone is guys will still think, and this is a common topic on dudes do better, is like a guy will come to me and email, I've been best friends with this girl for like 10 years and like I really want more and I'm always right back and I'm always like, you probably shouldn't do that because if she wanted you, she would have made that she step by you. now. She Women know yep. and you might ruin the friendship. And for a woman, we feel like you've kind of been chasing us the whole time and waiting till it was your moment. And then that kind of burns our trust in you because as a friend, we thought you would never go there. And once you go there, you're like, now we're not even in the friend zone anymore. You know what now I mean? Now it's awkward. Now but it's women do know right away know. And, and they know. What's the other side of that when the, the woman chasing the guy? You know, that's a totally different element too, right? Because women can be a little oh, bit On my crazy. new show, we trying. <laughs> you can hear this. No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit different, right? Because women have different objectives, you know? And, and a conversation I have a lot with a lot of my guy friends is like, do you think it's more about money, sex? Like, what do you think? What do you think it is? And I think right now we're looking at a society where we've propped women up for getting money from men, whether it be the housewives Mm -hmm. shows, whether it be, you know, all these TV shows where it's like, you know, they marry the sugar daddy thing, like all of these little things. And it's like, so I think men fear that now. And so if a guy's successful and a girl's pursuing him too much, they're like, think she's after the bread. Do you think she's after Mm -hmm. the bread? That's a tricky one, right? I think it's, I think it's my personal opinion. I think now it's a society relationships are a battle of control. It's power. I think it's, it's power. a battle of power. I like, think. it's because it's not necessarily money. Right. From what I see, right. I think it's like it's, it you can, have something mm-hmm. I want. I if getting through you gets me to that. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be money. It just gets me ahead further. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that's You're the so right. I think I think yeah. it's, I think it's a battle of control. And I think with the younger folks and the way things are advertised, marketed now with control, with ownership, stuff like that, it it, it bleeds into relationships too. And you see how you know even men are being abused now in relationships and. It's not always the other. It's not the Lifetime movie all the time, right? It could be a Lifetime movie could be the dude too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, know. look at the, the, the depth in um, Amber Heard. Johnny, right. That was wild. And Johnny didn't take a dime from her. It was just wild. <laughs> I didn't like, even nope. get to see it. I was just getting. Oh, like, I, didn't see I, I was getting it, clips, but, but it was hard to avoid it. It was like I'm Sports so, Center. So, yeah, I, I'm more into Sports Center. So when yeah. people are coming to me with, I'm like, this isn't really that important to me. There's other issues, but, right. but it was a big. It was. It was. Big you couldn't miss it. You're right. It's. It's control, and then also it can be a bit of ego. So if two very powerful two people very get powerful together. Two very powerful things, right. Um, mm-hmm. Right. You know, it can be a battle of ego. And so, you know, sometimes my guy is busy, and I, I think to text him, but then I would be like, you know, he. I texted him last. He should text me. And my best friend's like, you need to check your fucking ego. Mm. She's like, if you want to text him, you should just say hello. You don't ever over text him. You're not stalking. But, like, stop even overthinking it. Just say hi. Shout out to her, man. Yeah, so yeah. she... Yeah. she 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 checks me with that yeah, kind she, of stuff. Yeah, she ain't She's Trish. Good for me. Yeah, she ain't Trish. She be like, oh, he ain't doing. He out no. there doing. Uh uh uh. Yeah, yeah. I won't be people. I won't have people in my life that feed negative thoughts yeah. about something I want in my world. You know, I want them to be. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't really say it. Because I've watched friends get out of really successful relationships because of the voices yep. of their friends. You know, yep. he doesn't give you money, or he doesn't buy you enough stuff, or he doesn't do this for you. And it's like, yeah, but how do you feel when you're with him? Right. And do you have everything you need? You know, you're not needing something that he can't help you with. Like, stop. You you, you, you know, and yeah. maybe the guy's waiting. Guys want to build trust too. They want to be sure you're not with them for the wrong reason. So there's a lot of that. And also in dudes, I get to reconnect with the industry, which this is my first podcast where all I have is stars from the industry today. And I'm meeting all of the young starlets that don't know about the drama that went down and they look up to me mm, okay. and I'm getting to connect with them. And then after we record, I usually like give them time, you know, 20 to 30 minutes non-recording. I'm just like, hey, what do you want to know? Yeah. I want you to know you have a, a, an outlet to me at any time, whether it's about saving your money, whether it's questions within the industry, whether it's your health. And I ask them questions. What are yeah. you doing with your money? Uh, How does your family feel about this? How is your friendship? Do you have friends outside of the business? So dudes has helped me reconnect with a very dark past that I want to see a light for. What are, you, what are you saying from the industry that they're telling you and asking you about that's like completely just different from when you were in there or starting to the height of it? You know? I think what's been the neatest is mm-hmm. how independent they feel because of OnlyFans. 
mm-hmm. how much yeah. more in control they are. And Ooh. also it's made them business people overnight because it's not just shooting photos and putting it up on there. It's managing content. It's doing a little editing. It's adding some things, whether it's going to be a live show once a week, it's mm-hmm. made them make, they realize like, oh, I have the ability to make my own schedule and be successful. And now that they're doing that, they tell me like, Hey, I'm not going to do this anymore because I didn't like doing these types of scenes. Hey, I'm not going to go to these clubs because I didn't like mm-hmm. this club. Now, when someone mistreats them, they say to themselves, you know what? I'll just work a little harder on my own stuff and I just won't work for that person mm-hmm. again. Whereas before we had to continue to work for people that were awful and I'm seeing it start to weed them out and mm-hmm. they can't survive when people don't want to work for them. Yep, it's the power. This is the age of the powers in the the entertainer, and the indi- yeah. yeah, the individual. They're also the young ones now. All want a YouTube channel so people so they can be humanized earlier than we did. Yeah, you know we were told to not humanize ourselves. You know, in the '90s, the early 2000s, the producers and agents would tell you like, "Hey, people should only see you this way. You should be completely glammed up all the time, or never take a picture with no makeup on. You should never let people know about your private life. You should never do this." And so this young young girls, 21, 22, they're like. Yeah, I'm doing a YouTube channel where I just let people ask me questions and I talk about maybe current events and I just want to show myself offset. And I'm like, Oh, I love this so much because mm. you're doing something else. You know, all, all, these, this. all these, uh, like golden rules are being broken now. Yes. How's the industry feeling about that? Is there it's, like backlash from it? It doesn't matter anymore because you can look Ooh. at their numbers, right? It doesn't. You can look at their numbers. This girl's building followers. You know, one girl built 100,000 subscribers in a year on YouTube because she just decided to start like cooking on YouTube and sharing recipes and doing things. And she was pretty well known. I was like, that is powerful that you mm-hmm. gave this many subs. All came from her Twitter. All came from her banter on IG. So... I think it's it's not a choice for the industry anymore, right? The industry has to accept that we need to be nicer to everybody and make them feel welcome here so that they want to still come back and be a part of this. Man, um, so I think across the board in all different industries, like entertainment as well, they're saying like, I feel like the thing is like, oh, they're not as like, the in, like the performers aren't like the guys from, the guys and girls from the past, man. We had the classics. We had, do you think... That all those things that we're like moving away from is what built those legends and people that we look up for, to and the industry, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, because now I don't think, I wouldn't say I wouldn't think, but. You couldn't just, name off 20 people like you could 10 years ago. Yeah. I'm lost now, bro. Yeah. I, there's, a, right? there's a few that do stick Could've, out, but that. Four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, Excuse me. There's like Sarah a, J will always be in our hearts. That's my that's his, that's that's his homie. My, that's my family. That's and you know her. I know her. Yeah. She's the greatest yeah. woman I ever met in the business. Just, just yeah. off the show. Phoenix Marie is like a real cool. So person. I will say it like this. Look at it like sports. There was a time where we all followed one sports team and we were so glued in and you, There was a time where you could only see 10 major teams on major networks when we were younger, right? Right. So the big teams, that's why there's so many Dallas Cowboys fans because you could see the Cowboys. Now, like, I love fantasy football, fantasy basketball, dabble in a little fantasy baseball, golf, sports betting, UFC, wrestling. Now we're following players instead of teams. It's not the brand anymore. It's not the brand anymore. So I think it's kind of similar in the adult industry, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're not following like vivid in the nineties was everything. The vivid girls were like, everybody knew who they were. They were also beautiful. They had the, and then naughty America. And now it's like, it's so spread out. Yep. But Jenna Jameson was it boy. She was it. That was the one. She was it. In like the late nineties, that was it bro. She was it because of marketing campaigns that wicked pictures put together and wrapped her on buses at AVN and they were the first company to ever hire a marketing crew. First company in the adult industry to ever do that. And that just flipped the switch for her and it just made her world known. And then being in the Stern movie and all the other Mm. things that she did. But I think it's, it's definitely changed. And also the business doesn't have the control to look younger people. Now they do different things. Like I tell the first thing I tell everyone is the top three things. One is be consistent. So don't mm. change your hair color a bunch of times. They're like, why? Because the young girls, they change pink and white and blue and all this. And I'm like, because if a company pays for packaging for you to for a product, let's say a fleshlight, they don't want to know that they spent all that money on packaging and you're a brunette and now you're a blonde. So mm. that also changes the frame of your fan base because maybe your fan base was fans of you because you were a brunette and now you're a blonde. So I think it's the creative control that has been let go that is making it seem like you can't remember who people are because we were very struck 
this mm-hmm. way. It's everything's Don't structured. change anything. Yep. I mean, we were even, this. I'm from the no tattoo generation. You know, directors That's would, also true. would tell you if yeah. you had a tattoo, they wouldn't shoot you. Then you see like a Christy Mack who's just like, just blows up because yep. of her look. Yep. And yep. the shaved side. Yep, like, everything. Like, that would probably would have been a hell no. It would have been a hell no. Yeah. A face piercing would have been a hell no. Yeah. It um, was it was glamour. It was, you you look just like this. And now it's just now kind it's of like, yeah, now it's everything. Yep. Now everything. it's everything, which is great, but it makes it harder for certain stars to really stand out, right? What yeah. is going to make a star really stand out? I think a lot of it is what they're doing on their own social media. OnlyFans can be a curse because they could be making so much money that they forget to brand themselves out in mm-hmm. the mainstream world. And that's why I'm so proud of the young performers who have YouTube channels because I'm like, this is great. You're going to use those clips for your TikTok. You're going to do this. This is going to keep each lane moving on the freeway. Right? Because you don't want to just be stuck in one thing because the business can shut down at any time for 30, 60, 90 days over HIV, STDs, what have you. So you got to have some plans. But it is harder now for them to really have a company that stands behind them. We were on box covers and marketing and posters oh, yeah. and everything. They don't have that now. No, that, that. And we talk about this all the time in the music industry. We miss going to the store to get CDs. Oh, we miss that was standing a thing. in that, line. See, that was a date. That was right. something you would do on a date? Yo, you your group of friends. You want to talk about getting some extra ass, bro. You just oh. get the, you take it to FYE and you get the right. Okay. So I got this Bobby Valentino for that you, baby. My, Bow. That was my playbook for like, <laughs> that was like. It was a cheap <laughs> thing to do, yes. but you learned a lot about the person by what yeah. they listened to. Yes. They would turn you on to yeah. something yeah. you didn't know. You turn them on to something and, then and you, you start bonded getting this. right you're away. This. Yes. You're getting their yeah. mind immediately. Because like you knew their especially the artist, the artwork, like, oh, I vibe with this person yes. because they wear this and I yes. see it on their yes. cover and their their vinyl or something like that. Like, oh, I get it. You into this style. And you could, that told your whole personality. Yep. We don't have that no more. It's just like, I miss that. I even like, loved going to Blockbuster. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you, what? you're at, you're, you're, yeah. you're a young uh, one. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm definitely the Blockbuster. Okay, yeah. that was fun going in there and being like, do you see that, do you see that? Oh, do you want to see this? Do you want to see that? Yes. You'd be sitting there looking, you'd be like, well, then you, you know, you, you try to stay away from that one section. Yo. You try, to, you, you try oh. to go there too quick. My section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Call Hello. that section Lisa. Come behind the beats. You see those beats yeah. right there? Come behind the beats. Walk, she walking over to that direction. Like, My favorite of like the sections that are like really poorly blocked off. <laughs> so like, I can see through that curtain. I know it's over, like, over there. I know it's over there, right? Right. Or oh, you it's with like, your parents? You try to they try to walk real fast past it, like ah. Yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 go look at it. Go look at the video games. Right? Yeah, yeah. Go look at the video games. Yeah, it's right next to horror. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, but those were but those were those were the days, man. And those were like those were creative, you know, creative times. Let me ask you this: What is the if you have been? Let me ask you this. What is the best date you've ever been on? What is the best date you've ever been on? Uh, currently to now. May, you, you man might listen to the show today and come up with some crazy idea for tomorrow, but as of right now, the best date. So um, he took me, he knows I love nature. Uh, like love nature, love sunsets. He got this very specific room in Southern California that's like a villa that has the absolute best view of the sunset. And it's about um, 20 feet from the break of the rocks for the ocean. So there's these French doors in the bedroom that opens. You can just hear the ocean crashing all night. And there's this beautiful patio. And and I just love to sit outside and read, you know, be disconnected from technology. And so he was like, hey, I found this spot. You know, we're going to go. And while I walk in and it was sunset and just the ocean right there. And he was like, I just, I worked, I, I just worked forever to find this like specific the latitude, longitude, like this, everything about it, that you would have everything in one eyeful. You would see the ocean, hear the ocean. There'd be grass because there's these bunnies that like to come out at sunset there. Oh, God. And we've oh stayed God. a couple, yeah, yeah. Like, this, ba- every- this Bambi's house wasn't <laughs> This is like, and there's amazing birds. But he don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked this question. <laughs> this is where he says the past couple of years, he's starting to really listen. He's starting to really listen. But you're right. He's got, he's going to watch this episode be like, like, yeah, yeah. What else was out there, girl? But in my- yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see the, the dolphins, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just had to say that. I it was will funny. say this though that in my dating history, the one thing that always made something a great date before Uber was when oh, we knew we yeah. were going out drinking, and the guy would get a driver. 
Like I am so anti drinking and driving, yeah. and it's so, and also it'll ruin my experience. To know that he's going to be drinking and then he's driving, and so that's something that I think men don't realize is such a big deal. With Uber, it's not a big deal now. You can no. get an Uber, but don't drive and then have some drinks because then that girl is judging you and she's worried and it's irresponsible. It's silly. But to me, that was always a Kickstarter back in the day. It was like, oh, if the guy got a driver or made sure we weren't drinking and driving, I was like, that gave him big points. That was like really big points yeah. with me. See, someone mm -hmm. like yourself. As successful as yourself, I see it's the little things. It's the little things. It's the, it's the little things. things. It's not. It's, it's the little things. Yeah, guys have bought me lavish things that I didn't want. Guys have sent me things I didn't. No, it's the little things for sure. It's yeah. manners. It's right. planning ahead. Oh man, it's so being the considered. ocean had to, oh, had to yeah. like, the checkerboard had to be. And I got to go back there a second time. So he yeah. he got he oh, took us back yeah. there for my birthday this year. My man set up a piece of checkers. He played the, you know you had the you know when you was a kid, you had the real big pieces of checkers? The real big pieces it's on like so, the No, he said he said he on said the, on the carpet. <laughs> He, he he set up the pieces so she'd jump him and she'd win. No. He said, <laughs> he said <laughs> she walking through, she just like, oh. He timed it so perfectly too. And like I know the I know the whole nature schedule there of what I like to watch. He said, sailing boat coming by in three, two. <laughs> hey babe, hey babe, hey, hey. hey, babe. <laughs> Info yeah. right now. Oh, coming, what do you know? Right now. Right now. <laughs> but it is, you're right. It's the little things with me. Yep. And I think with a lot of women, it's the little things. It's the little tiny things, right? It sounds and, like and, and that night he slept till 12 p.m. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. I went to a basketball game with Lex Steele once. Y'all know who Lex Steele Lex is, Lex the right? God. Yeah, yeah, the God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he wore this like Lakers game. He wore this like powdered blue suit. I was like, okay. But when he pulled Ooh. up at my house, he couldn't even be bothered to get out to call into my unit. He actually just called me from his cell phone and, and I walked out and saw him sitting across the street in his car and I said, Lex, we're friends. We we hook up. We're good. Like we do scenes together. If you're dating a girl, get your ass out of the fucking car and walk to her mm. door and buzz into her mm. unit. Yeah. Do not sit across the street and then didn't even get out to open the door either. You know, just sat there. I was like, luckily I knew him because if I didn't, I yeah. I canceled dates, and I also love to leave dates. I be when my dating life, my young dating life, I love to tell a guy I'm going to the bathroom and just fucking leave. Uh, We're uh, done with damn, this. Lex, he like, ah, damn. He said, he, I'm out here. I'm out here. Yes. So like, I was trying to school the Lex bag. about it, and luckily, then Lex is the thing with Lex is like, Lex can be as cocky as he wants. So he's like, every woman knows what I have. I don't have to get out of the car and open the door. I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're, right. You're Lex just steal. You never have to open a door. Okay, you never have to worry about that. That's what's the ego. <laughs> But he should have still opened the door. You know that's yeah. crazy. You yeah. be like, yeah, man, saw her come out. Oh yes, oh oh yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. Watch out! Watch out now! You got the got the got the, got the coffee right there. Though. Don't sit right there. That's right. Cool little there. Okay, now put your arm in now. Hey, certain women you gonna do that for, bro? Nah. Certain women. Nah. Certain Welcome, apartment door that was closed. Like, watch your knee. Watch your knee. Don't touch that right there. Now come on. Now. <laughs> But we like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. love that. We want you to open the door. You yeah. good? You good before you close the door? You ask. Like, how's the AC? How's it blowing too much on you? Here, yeah. The vents be tripping yeah. sometimes. I just got this shit. They ain't, I need to take it back. Nothing, Had that window tent. They but can you know see what? you. They can't you know, see you. She'll always go back to that dude, though. And it'll be the dude with the limousine. She can't stand. Yep. But, dude. It's, do you think it's compensating? Is it compensating going on right there? I think so. I think the more you're just yourself, that once in a while is cool. Getting limbs, like once in a blue moon, if you're going to somewhere extravagant, trying to for a night on the town or something to show a good time, that's cool. You can just get an Uber, though, really. But, but you know, then you realize the point is, you just see all you need is a driver and two seats. You don't saying. need to spend like, the money on that, you know? That's yeah. It, it ain't, it ain't. So, do you think there's a there's the a, a, a overcompensating doing too much? Yes. Like yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know what? When I was young, okay, I grew up with a fairly bitter mom, bad divorce. So like she said horrible things to me about men growing up, which probably did scar me quite a bit. But she was, she said to me, if a guy does too much too quick, he's lying to you. So, and you know what? She's kind of right. Cause when they go so over the top, they're compensating for something. They're hiding something. They shouldn't need to go that far. It shouldn't need to be that extravagant. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a confidence thing. She also told me that God chose women to have children because men weren't smart enough. To be pregnant. 
Okay, like as no, we won. I'm like eight. And she's like they could never hand. I was like, you know, when I got older, I remember thinking like, why did she tell me these things? My lord, really why? Put it I was way too. <laughs> yeah. well, once I got older and understood them, I was like, she was fucking bitter. I never want to be that bitter. I never right, want right. to carry negative things to somebody else because none of that was my business. I need to know none of that. I would, but we would we would do dumb stuff being pregnant. We'd be like, eating, yeah. we'd be eating lunch off our fucking. It's also like there's a male birth control yeah. pill out, right? So I had this like open forum. I have a woman's group, and I talked to my girls. I'm like, would you trust a guy if he said he was on the pill? The pill's tricky. You got to take it at the same time every day. Oh, you have to know what medications can make it. Uh, not as potent. You have to know how long to take it before it's actually potent. That's what I must and and all of us kids. were like, no now, way. No I do it after the game. No, I do it after the game. No way could game a guy right do now. that and carry, no. it, carry it with you on a trip. You got to stay out late or overnight. got to have it with you. No way a guy's going to do that successfully. No judgment here. I love you all. But that's a lot for you. Yeah. It, like, but like, yo, see, I had it, but Terrell, he started playing around, right? I let somebody <laughs> borrow my backpack. It was in my backpack. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, yeah, nah, don't trust me. It's that. not gonna work, right? I'm like, nah, I mean, no. it's a great like, invention. Not gonna be able to do but that, Johnny. I just don't see guys doing it. Like, oh, shoot, to- I was supposed to be two o'clock. It's 4 50. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was in the third quarter of Madden. Uh, you know, yesterday, yeah. and then Chris starts saying some yesterday. bullshit. <laughs> so, yesterday. Once, once you forget it for a day, it's so easy to forget two, three, four more days. Then you're like, oh, shit. Like, no, nah, no, nah, it's over. By the time, like, my 12th kid came out, I got 12 kids, but close. And I'm sitting back and I'm like. <laughs> How many kids do you have? I have four. How old are they? They, my oldest is 10 and my youngest is four. <gasps> so much fun in the house, right? 12 and 10. 12 and Girls. 10. Oh, fun. I'm sorry. It's scary. I got three knuckleheads and a scarier, daughter. Right? No. They're athletes, though. So oh, that's, that's then you're pretty, good. Yeah. That'll keep them busy well, them and they'll is. stay out of trouble. I, yeah. But 10 and four. So you've got. Um, I got three uh, boys and a girl. Oh, girls how old? Uh, my baby, she's five, and God, that's my heart right there. It's different with girls. That's mm-hmm. my heart, dude. dude but you and the be boys are probably the super protective of the girl, of your daughter. Yes, the, all the boys are. Yes, they are. Um, my, but it's, it's my a teenager is. is scary because where do you start? Mm-hmm. How much social media do you monitor? How many things are you looking at? How mm-hmm. do you do? You got to meet their friends. I check their vocabulary. What she's saying back to me now? Uh, we're not saying back, but like just how she phrases certain things. I hear how she talks with her cousins. It's like, oh, that's sus. I'm like. You know about saying sus. Yo, my, like, yo, you know, like, my son say that, yo. Yeah, like she's like, she's witty. She gets it. So yeah. I'm like, and now she's this year turned 13. Terrified. And she's oh. picking that up from classmates and she's yep. picking that up from school and she's picking it up from listening and to things. the phone, every every kid's getting it quicker. They just, they process it and they get it. They catch it. Process. Like, like my, my daughter, my youngest was like opening the phone and like hitting skip on YouTube oh, and yeah. Netflix they by do like stuff two. We don't even know how to do. Yeah. yeah like she gets like, mm. And if they don't have it, it's a status symbol to them. Like by yep. 10 years old, mm-hmm. kids are getting it and they feel <clears throat> really stressed about not having one of their own. Yeah. And they or, don't, or the other kid can do it. So now the kid has to do it too. Yeah. They have to get it faster. Like, oh, but he, Timmy has like, like he's 11, he's younger than me and he has this and he can do this. So I want to do this because he has it and or she thing, has it. We were just trying to get sneakers or Atari which seemed like a lot of Tony money back there, back then. And phones are a thousand bucks. Like, yeah. this is a really expensive gadget. Parents have to be I buying just, kids. I just wanted the new Tony Hawk game. I was a simple child. I didn't ask for much. Game now, Breaker 2000. Come on, hook me up. Now That's like, you, you know. buy a phone that is $300 for them to update it and just make it two milliseconds faster. Yeah. And you have to pay another $300 yeah. to update the version. Yeah. That's where we're at now. Yeah. My phone calls drop left and right, bro. It's crazy. Like, you know, speaking of this, though, what made you a big sports fan? Like, what, what, what? Oh, my upbringing. You know, Pennsylvania, there's nothing yeah. to do. <laughs> nothing to do, okay? Either get pregnant or watch sports or you join a sport. get pregnant or watch sports. Right. Um, and luckily, my mom was a basketball mom at Lafayette College. So she oh. would cook for every home game so that the away team had a hot meal before they got on the bus and went back home. And that was like a big thing back then. Moms volunteered to do this. And at the time, she had been dating the coach. So that's how she got access for that. And then we got to go to every game. So it was by her right. cooking, we got our life revolved around. Lafayette basketball and so that really spurred off my love for the NBA and so I just started watching games we were allowed to watch one hour of TV a day my brother and I so I have one brother who's two years older one hour of TV but if it was sports we could watch it all day 
My mom wanted us to be competitive. She wanted us to play sports. I played basketball all through school. I was in the ski club, so I skied all through school. All things I oh. still do. I still I still hoop at least five days a week. I have a court where I live. Um, Are you nice? Yeah. And then my Girl, dad. Don't make me pump up the basketball in my car. We would go right around the corner, shoot some jump shots. I'm going to see it. this. I want to see this. This heat, though, this makeup has to work with the signing yeah. later. If, if, if that didn't have to do with signing later, yeah. I'd be all about that life. I'd be yeah. like, let's go to Walmart, <laughs> yeah. buy me some basic yeah. clothes and some shoes. Let's go. I got you. I would do it. You, you well, right. You right. Stay. You right. And then yeah. we saw my dad every Sunday, and my dad was a football fan. Ooh. So I had to learn games in a very unique way. My dad despises sports broadcasters. I don't know why. He's old school Italian. He's a very odd dude. Uh, very odd dude. Mm. So he would listen to Italian music while we watched games. So I had to really know what, yeah, no, no, Yo, I, I could not. So like, yeah. Can't stand this guy, man. So commercials, I would ask my brother or my dad what had happened, what play was called, what the penalty was for. And so I really got honed in by probably 10 years old of being able to watch a silent game and know what was actually happening. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. and that got me really in and it, it just became like part of my fiber, right? Sports is a great escape. When I went on the road feature dance, Thing. when I first traveled, I went on the road alone. They wouldn't buy you two tickets or have you mm -hmm. security with you go alone. Sports are the same in everywhere you are. And in the early nineties, some hotels only had like 10 channels and one was always sports. Yep. Yep. So I started, I would I'd find out when there were games when I was in town. I went to a ton of basketball arenas, a ton of baseball parks, a ton of football stadiums. I'd be like, all right, this game's in town. This hockey's in town. I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go to that. You know, I usually link with the sports radio shows in those towns because they were having me on to promote my gig. And I'd be like, hey, do you guys have access to tickets? Do you know anybody that can help me get tickets? So it became even more of my fiber and it became a great way to make conversation with men while I was naked at a strip club that wasn't about me being naked at a strip club. So if I yep. went to a Pirates game and I was at Club Edison, I could be like, yo, I went to that Pirates game. I love the stadium. PNC Park's so great. You know, if I was in Denver and I went to my hot, like I used that as a tool and mm. it really helped. So when I started doing sports, my fans who had these conversations with me, they believed right away. Mm -hmm. They were on board right away. They're like, oh, I've had these conversations with her. She was butt naked, but I had these conversations. They see, they see you next time you come through. They're like, hey, Lisa, hey, hey, Spurs and six, Spurs and six right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. I'll see you in a couple minutes, girl. Yeah, more guys will make <laughs> conversation with me at my site. Yeah, they just want to talk to you. They just want to talk. 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 They just <laughs> I would have guys bring in their fantasy football lineups and be like, like hey, right, can you, you help got? me what set my lineup for tomorrow <laughs> Saturday? I'm like, let's do this. Let's see, do who's on the waiver wire? Let's see that's a lifelong that. fan right there. That, yeah. that he's going to remember you in one. I, that's he's going to remember you to see you every time. And sports kept me inspired. Yeah. They kept me away from doing heavy drugs, falling into the life of drinking. Amen. They kept me working out, learning mm -hmm. about new talks. I mean, you, you follow LeBron and Tom Brady and you're trying everything. You cryo, infrared, you know, all your diet stuff. And it's constant learning. So mm -hmm. athletes are so inspiring. And I think it kept me. Who good. was your favorites like throughout the generations? I mean, of course, Michael Jordan. Yeah, you know, right. I grew up the Bulls. I mean, Jordan, just the legacy of Jordan. But there's so many players that I look at now. Like I really like what Patrick Mahomes does. Of course, we all love Tom Brady. We all love... Uh, I love I love beating them though because I'm a Rams fan. And, and you know what? I was just going to bring up Matthew Stafford. Seeing him move oh. and find his groove and also the friendship that he has with Sean McVay is yes. so beautiful and yes. unique. And to think that Fans wrote off Matthew Stafford Hard. up until yes. this move. Yep. They wrote him off. They were negative. Broadcasters wrote him off. They were I negative. Was, I was singing the praise because I was in Ireland. at Because I had to watch. I was in Ireland watching the Super Bowl with Rams versus Patriots. So I was up till 4.35 in the morning watching us just like. Because we averaged 30 points a game mm -hmm. throughout the year. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley was killing. Then he had the. He, something was something was going him. on. Yeah, yeah. Overworked yeah. the knee. And then like Jerry Goff would not throw the ball downfield. So I, when we got Matt yeah, Stafford, Cooper I'm like, Cooper Cup was like non-existent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people weren't even talking about Cooper Cup mm -mm. until like oh like I, when we got Matt Stafford. I'm like, yes, I don't care if you throw 30 picks this season, just throw it downfield, just sling it. I, we got a gunslinger. We had a defense. And I was like, we're made, we're going. And everybody's like, no. But Even Tom with Brady. that injury to the running back right before the season yeah. started, oh, Cam Akers, that was Achilles. devastating. It was like, Achilles oh my tear. gosh, this is devastating. Didn't Cam Akers. the game at all. Nope. Got Tyler nope. Higby up in there. My two most drafted players, I had 25 fantasy football teams I managed last year. My two most drafted players were Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Because they, they were late in the draft. Nobody wanted Matthew Stafford. No. Nobody wanted Cooper Cup. I'm like, these are going to be my two for and, studs. Then, and, then, and then, look, the greatest wide receiver season, like, pr- practically ever. Yep. And I'm hoping that Odell gets right. You know, he's he going well. to New Orleans. I think he's going to. They're trying to really push for him to stay in LA. It's all going to be about the medical. <laughs> I didn't evaluation know if that was official after. or not. I hope he stays there because Me that's too. where he belongs. He he's loves an LA. LA. Guy. He's, LA he's guy. an LA style guy, he's man. LA Come guy. on. And then anyway, I don't know how we forward in all these players, but I don't care. I'm just like, mm-hmm. Do you, so my, my mm-hmm. favorite sports show to listen to is Pat McAfee. Pat was here. He's great. Oh, Pat's my guy. He's the greatest. Oh, he he's was, the great. His whole crew is great too. It's oh, everybody. I gotta meet them it's guys. not just. It's everybody. So I listen. They 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 own fifteen hours a week of me. And even if I he miss it, hilarious. I go back and listen on podcast or on YouTube. I'll listen yep. any way I can. Shout out Pat. But he talks about the sliding scale with the salary cap. And so when he's like <laughs> interviewing like Rappaport or anybody, he's yep. like, so the salary cap is fake, right? It's really fake. You guys are just pushing money off till later. It's fake. You're all. This is fake. It's that energy, it bro. His energy is so, it's so great. great. It's so, so great. great. Oh my god! He's and he, shut- he he's like this all show. Yeah, yeah. So with a baseball <laughs> bat, a golf club, playing the golf ball, like, shooting some hoops, ping pong, and oh. he's like, dude, I'm like, well, how is he just like on? <laughs> like getting this. thirty million from FanDuel was a reason for me and my friends to go out and celebrate. He changed the game. I am like, I want to have a drink for this. Yep. He deserves it. His team deserves it. He takes mm. very good care of his people. Yes, he does. He's easy to listen to. I very. love what he brings out. On it was fun working with him on SmackDown. It must have been. It was so much fun. He's like, oh, I already know what you got. Let's go. Let's go. I got you. And you just come in there like with such great greeting energy. His energy is, so is I'm just off like, the charts. I can feel it from the air and I've never I met can't, him I can't. I, I want to see him win every time and everything. Like right. He was like yeah. amazing. But yeah. I get depressed talking football. But you guys are, I'm happy for you guys, man. Well, yeah, who's Tennessee. your team? <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. Listen, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, so we get faked out every year. Every year we're no, talking about how we great tell we're you what's going to happen. <laughs> ain't no fake out. We ain't no fake out. Nine and seven, nine and seven, nine and seven. But well, look, we're gonna make it. No, you, you, you nine and seven. You have Derrick Henry. He's wearing down. We wear running backs down. He's got a, He's got another good year. Or two. Eddie George, Chris Johnson, yeah, Johnson. Wendell White. Wow, oh. you've been a Tennessee fan for a while. Ninety nine. Wow. Yeah, same Rams fan. Ninety nine. <laughs> okay, I was born Greatest and raised in a Dallas Cowboys family, and I stuck with it. I was there when I was watching when uh, the Rams beat us, and he says, "He said uh, Kevin Dyson said, uh, ah. I'm too short." Yep. And <laughs> and that's been all, that's been in my lifetime as a Titans fan. Too short. Yep. <laughs> too short. It's, just, it's a short season for you. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just uh, you know, it's just sad. Lisa, yeah. I don't know. They, they, yeah, no, I'm like, yeah, we do great. We do great. Oh, we're twelve or four. Great. We're gonna lose this somehow in the playoffs. We're gonna lose somehow. I'm bro. going to and Tennessee. I'm going to Nashville, July 29th for another Dave and Buster's signing. So I'm taking oh, cool, a girlfriend great. of mine. She's never been to Nashville. We're gonna make a little adventure out because there's a lot to do in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. And I'm one of those people that likes to line up all those lame tours. Right. Like I want to do every tour. I love doing tours and I'll because I'll oh, shoot wow. them for for YouTube. Maybe they will just shoot them all. My maybe they'll win. So maybe yeah, they maybe, will. Maybe they'll see attractive women. Maybe they'll win something. Or do a segue <laughs> right I don't know too many women around there. So right. maybe you walk in there. But it's, <laughs> but it's really growing. Tennessee, Nashville's really growing, that city. There's some sick new buildings there. Right. New apartments. I'm sorry, like, guys. It's got hope. Look, there was a minute where people were talking about Aaron Rodgers going there. You must have been like, Six to midnight right away. Oh, no, right? but no, I'm used to it. We almost got, I, almost, I jumped for the Peyton Manning thing. We almost got paid. We almost got a lot of people. <laughs> because he wasn't going to ever, almost he, a lot. but he wasn't <laughs> ever going to go there. surely lose because we was, almost go everywhere. It was an inside tip because he had bought a parcel of land because he's building yeah, property yeah. there. Yeah. And so then people were like, oh, he's coming in. Because in no. we didn't want to get rid of Tannehill. We wanted one more year with him. You paid him a lot, though. Now he's we such gotta, a nice guy. You paid him a oh, lot. He's like, oh, he's a nice guy. I don't want to be my quarterback, though. You know what I mean? I'm like, like, I'm, like I'm, I'm good, Lisa. I'm he good. Is, th- th- you guys gave him a ton of money, though. Gave him a ton. Like a ton of a money. A lot of money. A we lot were, of money. A lot of money, though. Throw, throw five yard slants. That's five, it. Five, all day. Uh, uh, mid, all day. He needs mid ten, range change. He needs that's 10 it. Julian Edelman's, and that's it. Like, yep. he, he can't have a good receiver. Nope. He can't have somebody running great routes because they're just wearing out those wide receivers for nothing. Yep. I'm like, and his best tight end left went to New England. Yep, and we lost, and we traded AJ because we didn't want to pay AJ Brown hundred million dollars. That was a shocking move right before the draft. Was I knew it? they weren't going to pay him. Yeah, we're trying to see don't play receiver. Pay, I do don't love pay anybody. that players are getting money. Yep, I don't love the NFL deals because they're not guaranteed money like the nope. MLB or the NBA. So there's they, still that. But the the the, the um. 
the gap is getting a little tighter because like it's they're getting, getting 85 little... mil, 75, 72 guaranteed. I'm like, okay, we're like, we're getting there. We're getting there. A lot of it is incentive laden. Like, yeah. you know, Odell's deal last year was all about incentives. And when a player gets injured, they're losing all those incentives as well, which isn't fair. It isn't fair. Mm-hmm. You're writing on their brand name and them for the whole season, even though mm-hmm. they're injured. And also injury shouldn't cause a reason for somebody not to make money, right? right. But I mm-hmm. love that players are not being as loyal as they once were. There nope. was a time where they'd be like, I'm going to stay with this team because this is my city. You know what? F that. No, Just Chris, go. Chris Carter. Yeah. You know Vikings and I'm stuff. They're like, no, I'm going to win here. I'm going to win here. Randy was like, <laughs> Damian Lillard's a great example. Oh. You know, I love Lillard. And love I, I, I would love to see what it would look like. And I also love that he's so loyal to But don't you want a ring by now? Like, Ain't you tired isn't... of Portland? Ugh. Yeah. That too. But... Portland in Portland? Yeah. Huh? The women in Portland? The, hey, the, hey, hey. I know they're in Tennessee. I wrestle in Portland. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. but you know, <laughs> he's shooting himself in the foot by doing it yes. this way, right? He could move into a different market. Like, could you see Lillard on a team like the Warriors? A team that has just this chemistry, this energy, this excitement that's, about hooping. That's hard to replicate. I, I, I agree. think, I think, like, that's very, like, everybody's like, yeah, we're building a, a team, like, to make, like, the Warriors. I'm like, you can't just. Put no. people together to you gel like a You also can't get another Steph Curry. You can't no. draft. It's his you can't draft a system like that. No clay. It's every the energy yeah. that they bring as yeah. well. But it's the, there's no individual. Even done, Draymond is a knucklehead, but he'll still ride for Steph. Ride for ride Clay. For, he rides for them. For them guys. That team dogs. has made Andrew Wiggins better, though. Can yes, you he believe did, he, he was in. a number one draft pick, and it took him this long to be a consistent player, and his consistency still is not one hundred percent there. But he's but providing. I love to see it. He's, he's oh, providing. He's contributing because he bought so in. Happy. He took that ego aside and he, he buys in. in. As you can't just get like that. You're and, right. And, number and one be, draft pick hurt him a bit because yeah, there was an ego. That, that ego him. like hit him. So like, uh, also Timberwolves was not like a no. system team. No, he's no, a journeyman. He moved four or five times. Yeah. That's not easy on an NBA oh. player. But yeah. he said, you know what? I see these guys are winning. Uh, the coach, this, all the organization, the fan base. You know what? I'm a play. What y'all role, need me to do? What y'all, role, you need me to guard the wing, Luca? Got it. Boom. Yeah. Let's go. Like so, it, it makes me happy because I followed his career from day one, and when, yeah. I, when I watch a player finally find their groove, I'm like, I'm so happy for you. And you know, there's not a player in the world that won't accept a DM from me. That's kind of one of those things that I have. And it's not that I'm trying to hook up with them, but if they're having right. some good, if they're playing well, I feel the need to just give them words of how happy they're making me on the court. And it's always wonderful. Where was that? Can you guys are all 52 members of my Titan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all 52. Oh. Well, they're, they're not all playing that well. They're not winning. So why would I do that? Like they have to be winning. <laughs> Motivation. Motivation. Just say. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, she answered my DMs. Winning. <laughs> Thank you for sliding in there, too. Hey, I was business. I'm business first every time. What was that? Where was the freaking. Where, where was your support for Anthony Bennett, though? That number one draft pick. Yeah, that was that did not Ooh. play out that well, right? I was like, what does he do well? For him to go number one. The problem with players that young is if they don't get somebody that's really honing in everything, their diet. You hear a lot of these young players say, I was still yeah. eating fast food all the time. I was like, you cannot be running up and down a court and working out all day and doing all of this and traveling and dealing with inflammation and sleeping in random beds in hotels. Like, you got to think about your body. Your body is your machine to make your money. That is your lifeline. And I think they waste those prime mm-hmm. years. Everyone judges them so hard now because every clip is on the internet. Players were allowed to make mistakes in the 80s and 90s. That's why I don't, I don't get we, that. We only I remember the there. highlight like clips because those are the that, only so photos so. that ever made it to Sports Illustrated. Bro. And those are the only plays of the day we ever saw in Sports Center. Man, yeah. what, oh, oh, I'm about bro. to say something. I'm about to be, could be quiet. Go say it. I'm just going to say it this way. And, and our next guest is Michael Cooper. All I'm saying is, I heard connection. everybody had, like things was happening, but you know I heard Magic Johnson and James Worthy was tagging chicks back in the day, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Good for those together. chicks. You know what I <laughs> mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> yo, <laughs> watching them win in time though. That's that's some like, that's some Kobe beef right there. You know what I'm saying? That is some beautiful. That is a five star restaurant. Okay, good for bro, those ladies. Breaking, breaking hearts though. Gosh, it must have been amazing. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, Speak, all right, so Just celebrity. Saying. Are there any celebrities that you might or very close with in any sense? You know, I never, cool I never kiss and tell. I don't share my private personal relationships because people are too judgmental. Even if I'm just mm-hmm. friends with somebody and we just have great banter, if it comes out that we have banter, people will automatically assume we're hooking up and uh, 99% of the time it's not. 
It's mm-hmm. when I see people struggling with mental health, when I hear people getting bashed on sports show after sports show, I reach out yeah. immediately. Hey, are you listening to this noise? It's just noise. Be with your people. Mm-hmm. That experience that I went through that we talked about really defined when I see harsh things happening to people on social For media, sure. whether I know them or not, I reach out. Yeah. And I'm like, let me tell you to just take a step back right now. Like, so. We need you on a coach of staff. Yes, I do need to be on some sort of. If you watch Billions, I could be Wendy from Billions. I was on that show. Season four, episode seven with Hard Bob. Uh, Catch up on season four on oh, One no, Billion. It's no, my no, favorite no. show. As well, I've, been, I've been putting nuggets in the last three episodes, but I don't know if people will be catching them yet. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. yeah. Oh, man. I played a cameo on one of my favorite shows, Ooh. Billions. Billions? Oh, and yeah. Okay. He's just he's told, started watching it. So oh, yeah. he's behind, so I won't spoil oh, it. So since we, man, let's transition to the uh, pop culture thing. Like, what, what are you watching right now? Okay, what am I watching right now? I I'm have on that a, Stranger Things, man. I, I haven't watched it yet, but many people tell oh. me I should. Oh, but they I get a, brutal. I have a very lame palette. I like all rom-coms. Okay, like I had to watch Marry Me on my way to see my dude because I knew he would never sit through it. Like he's mm-hmm. not going to watch Marry Me. Like, get, out, get it out your system now, baby. Okay, he's like, <laughs> Nick, you're looking. So I don't ever pick movies alone that I think okay. he would want to watch. He gets me watching more action, you know, more thrillers, things that I would never watch. I just finished the whole series and I didn't mean to, I wanted to save some of it, um, of Working Moms. It's a Netflix show. It's really mm-hmm. funny. Uh, the Flight Attendant on HBO. Oh, Jesse's watching Flight Attendant. Okay. Jesse, it's I weird, watched it. but it's great. Yeah, Kaylee Kuko from- uh, Yes, and the, I love her, so I'll support Big anything. Uh, also on HBO, Hacks. It's a show about- I heard about Hacks. Oh, I heard Hacks was so popping. so great. Yeah. So great. So like, you know, Good I, Girls, I loved that on Netflix. I yeah. watch so much my, my Netflix queue compared to his, like when we log into oh, his, you can tell. I'm like, yo, I don't even, I've never seen what any of these shows. What is this galaxy I'm in? You know? yeah. <laughs> because it's, Are we in Hulu? Some, so to his algorithm, I don't want him to pick anything on mine because I don't want him to throw off my algorithm. <laughs> and he has the same. So we log into our own separately. I get it. I don't want to mess, but I love. Can't cross contain. I love like Emily in Paris. I can rewatch that a million oh, times. Oh. Uh, there's a really trashy I'll show, you, Dynasty. Dynasty Ooh, on Netflix. It's from the old spinoff Dynasty from the eighties. I just love the makeup, the fashion, the clothes, the the, the richness. Like I just I watch a you lot of bad. And then Ninety Day Fiance, of course, and Ooh, Life After yeah. Lockup. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it, Mike. Stop it. Stop I, it. Love it. After Lockup. Like during the pandemic. All right. Ninety Day. I give you a. You get a two show. You get two shows. You get two episodes of the show. Well, where I get where no like for like if you try to introduce me some whatever your okay, show is so gonna be two. you give me I give you two that's I'm fair like, you got to get me with two episodes okay. after that I think you would like that day. I feel like you would I need you you, you got me with two what's great about it is it reminds <laughs> yeah, you how you hard two, people that, will two work show, two episodes to believe that they're in love like I love all these scam culture documentaries I love the Tinder swindler I love Anna Delver that was, I love that was crazy Benjamin. Tinder swindler was dope okay let let's, let me ask you guys you watched it mm, I have not. Okay, who is more wrong? The person who scams or the person who believes the scammer? Well, ethically, the scammer. Ethically. Right, but I think it's all about that fantasy being sold. He, he sells the fantasy. And right. I think women who, I think the victims are searching and like wanting something. They want to believe it so much. They want to. They want to be in love so bad. That's how 90 Day is. They want to be in love so bad that they will overlook all of these weird things. They'll take the cheese. And then they won't go to their people and be like, yo, is this suspect? Like, you don't need to do a full background check, but if your friend said to you, this is a stranger and he's asking you to take a loan out for $20,000, your friend should say to you, you wouldn't even take that loan out for yourself. Why would you do it for a stranger? But it's the vulnerability of the fact that like someone Really those cares. Women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some finally, my prince charming is here to yeah. rescue me from this life that I'm depressed in, lonely in. I don't want to be in here. Yeah. Any but anywhere but Soulja here. Boy. People oh, no. oh my god, ninety day soldier boy. Okay, it's not the soldier boy you're thinking of. There's a soldier boy on on yeah. There's a soldier boy on the boys too. Kim Bali. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh okay. look. We have inside jokes. Yes, we do. Oh. Okay. Oh. Mike, you want the chair, bro? No, 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 no. Come on. Uh, you have to give it a shot. 
like you, you really, really do. It's cringy. Yeah. I'm just gonna warn you, it's cringy, and you cannot watch oh. it live because that shit oh. sells so many commercials that it's really only about a 30 minute, one hour show. Yeah. So even like Darcy and Stacy hooked. Darcy and Stacy hooked. Okay. Yeah, that, I'm not. Him and the wife be watching. The wife got him on it. Yeah. The wife got him on it. Sounds yeah, like the wife got him on it. That's the only reason why. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. True. All right. But okay. it's a talk so shit Darcy. show. You watch it to like talk to your partner about like, would you ever do that? How do you feel about the reason I asked oh. about the Tinder swindler is because when he started with Cameo, <laughs> like, like, he did like 30 grand in one day. Yeah. Yeah. And crazy. a bunch of stars crazy. left Cameo because they were offended that Cameo took him yeah, on his talent. I heard about that. And it's really not our choice. What another business does. I believe it's never my choice. I'm not, I, mm -hmm. I stay in my lane in that department. Right. But so when I met with my rep and she talked to me about it and I asked her, I'm like, you know, why are women falling for that shit? Like, we come from a world where men were supposed to take care of us. When did women get so confused that they're supposed to be taking out loans for a guy? I was raised like, you, listen, whatever you bring to the table, you bring to the table. Don't ask your guy for money. But mm. a guy should never be asking you for thousands of dollars, especially if you're not married. You Man. don't have a business together. You don't have a kid. You've known this guy two months listen, and he's yeah. asking you for thousands but of what, dollars. What, but he probably hit him with the Lex and the steel like, hey, you know what I got, girl. You know what I'm providing. You know what I'm giving. You could give Lex half of that and hook up with this him. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. Well. Bar Can you get Lex in here, man? I need, I've been wanting to you talk to that me. man. You I'll, I'll make the link. Please. I'll make the link. You got to have Lex. Yeah, that's the GOAT. That's man. my guy, bro. Because I watch this, this Vlad TV interviews. I'm like, so I like this guy. He's so smooth, too. Yeah. I like this guy. You feel yeah. his smooth energy when he's in your presence. I don't want to feel him, but yeah, he needs to be in here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't want to get on my shout outs, but. A lot of you, I'm just gonna say what up, man. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. No, nah, shoot, shoot, shout about, shoot the shot, B. Shout out to my man Ace, Ace. You know Ace. I don't know if you know Ace. Shout out to Ace. Shout, um, shout out to uh, Richard Man. Shout out to him. I know these people. So, shout out to Rich. You know what I mean? Just want to give my shout outs to people. I hope they didn't. They weren't people that sent you the bad email. No, not at all. No, no, no. no none shout of out those my people. No. I'm shouting out my dogs. No. Yeah. I'm not talking about the demon days. You're going to leave that alone. I don't want to talk about that. Come on, bro. You need to bring this to light. He got all these stories I've never heard of. Like, him, like, oh, yeah, Sarah J. That's one of my people. So I got, like, I'm like, all right, what's the story? He's like, do we need to sit down and have a one on one with him? Yep. I'll do some of the interviewing. He, I'm like, bro, what are these he stories? Comes, he slowly comes out of his shell. So you got to record another episode first mm -hmm. and then bring him in when he gets yes. here. Because he's I'm quiet like, at first. Oh, the, yeah, he, he's focused. slick. Yeah. We've done how many episodes? 60 episodes together, bro. You ain't like I caught on to your You're whole on scheme. Page right now with all the 90 day fiancés because I see Starcy at DC, uh, Starcy at DC right there, right? Uh, Man. Uh, I want I'm trying to find it. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Stacy, right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, I will pull this up here. Okay, so my favorite character okay, of all 90 Days was Caesar. Remember Caesar? You sound like a sleaze bag. She never showed up. Remember Caesar with Maria? Oh, she, yeah. So I buy cameos from Caesar because I feel like I should be a sugar mama and just help him out a little bit, right? Caesar sounds like a slime ball name. He was, he's a super sweet guy. He's a nail tech oh. from North Carolina. I'm hoping to shoot a YouTube video with him later on this year, have him go down and do my nails. But he got so hustled by Maria and he kept making plans and flying cross country and he would have like a whole suitcase of stuff for her, including like chocolate edible panties. And then oh. he, she wouldn't show up and he would have to pack them. And I always always think like, just eat the panties, Caesar. Don't repack them. They're gonna melt in the suitcase. <laughs> like Caesar. Eat the panties. Panty Caesar. Treat yourself and Caesar. eat the panties. Just eat the panties, Caesar. You're he making never, this hard. He never met her until the testimonial. She came on video, but she never met him in person. She just hustled him the whole time. He sent her all this money. And so I just love if it's, Caesar. If it's cringy material, I will back out quick. Okay. It's, it's pretty cringy. It's I'm, cringy, but it's interesting. Like it hooks you in because you see it. It's trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It make, you're, oh. you're, Your brain is off. Yeah, sure. Your oh. brain is off. You're not thinking about any world problems. You're not thinking yeah. about your own problems. You're just, oh. you're just consumed. Yeah. How about love after lockup? People falling in love with inmates. They secretly get married to those inmates in prison so they can have conjugal visits. Then they are responsible for those inmates when they get out because the probation address is their house and it doesn't always work out. Mm -hmm. Does it ever work out? It does. I'm going to watch that one. It does. <laughs> that sounds unique. It's so good. That, that, you, that piqued so my good. interest. I'm like, people that crazy? When the girl has to take her her um, guy home to her parents and explain that they got married while he was in prison, I'm always just staring at the parents like, how do you feel right now? It's, it doesn't always work out. Sometimes it does. But I've learned that about putting money on books, right? So 
these guys that are smart, they write a lot of love letters to the girl. <laughs> no, but you put money on their books, right? You in the streets, Lisa? <laughs> I learned about I'm this through the show. I'm about the Jay-Z black album. This that week. show oh. taught me that. <laughs> So that oh so sometimes a girl will get the guy home and then realize a yes. lot of women were putting money on his books and he she has oh some competition. Boy. I'm like now I know like it's I a, love the description like 25, else at 30. yes hey, but this ain't though nobody got more games than a man in solitary confinement talking to a woman he can't see with nothing to do yeah and that he the got thing, all the imagination she write, they write the best love letters and then when they get out they they're not the invested I'm like well the guy had all that time that man's centuries is on point yes. he sees everything so, and then and then when I had asked. So, so, I don't see one episode of the show. Who are these people? What is this? Oh, this is from Love After Lockup, right? Right. Okay. Uh, she. What is this? Yeah. All right. He wrote, wrote, wrote session. Right. Here we go. She takes. Yeah, I don't remember her story exactly. Do you remember okay. this one? No, I no. I watched one episode of this. And I, you I, couldn't get any further. Come on. I don't. I, I don't know who. It's I, so who good. Started who started it? Who started it? I think it's Bravo. Oh, who started it? It's always the girl. Who finds the guy on the website? So there's these dating inmate websites, which yes, you can look up on your. How own. do you get online when you inside? They have internet now. When? Yeah, uh, and they yeah, let them have dating know. profile, huh? and they get like an hour a day to talk on the internet and make and they can make phone calls from these video calls too. But most of them are just they do their best writing letters because they have so much time. Oh, I see presidents IG live all the time. What's up, man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what it do? It's what good. do? What do? Ah, it's good. <laughs> wow. So so uh. she hollered at him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it didn't work out. Or how, how, pull me up. Uh, what life after lockup? Do I want you to pull up? You know you. I mean, this is just like a picture of the cast over there. Go keep going. Okay. Lord. So oh, okay. Oh I'm gonna tell you a winning Lord. story. Okay. This one is winning because he and his girl were both in prison. It was her. Okay. They have done very well. She's actually putting together a rehab treatment center for other inmates when they get out. Why Alec Ball um, went over here? Yeah, he does look like yeah, Alec Ball, like, right? Doing the <laughs> this one didn't work out. They're both very violent. But I'm going to say yeah. this. Oh, wow. This show inspired me to read more about, you know, the life of a prisoner. And all through that, I read an article, this wonderful man, Andre Pert. He started this app called Con Connect. And it's like a LinkedIn for ex-cons and what they're doing is they're working with states where there's like a guidance counselor that starts about six months before release and teaches them what it's going to look like on the outside how they're going to manage their lives and also if you want to hire you can place an ad on this app and then the you don't have that like oh you had a great interview we're going to do your background check no everybody knows right off the bat we're hiring you we're giving you a second chance he himself is going to reduce recidivism and he is really amazing. So this show inspired me to learn more. Then I reached out to Andre and had him on my podcast because I was like, dude, this is so amazing. Like, this is great. I love that you're doing this. And so really good success story. But yes, this is. Oh, God. Yeah. These, these two, these two these two 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 from NXT. They look like hustle, oh, and you know what else? They hustle and flow. Swinging. They just started <laughs> adding some girls into their life. Who she wanted was her idea. They live in Vegas. Like I know the whole story with those two. I'm happy. I want her to get her sex on. You know what I mean? And he's he's good. He's he's confident. Who, who I Bell? wanted to be free. Alan, Alan Bowen. They're a successful. Oh, you talk, oh, you talk about him? Yep, they have reinvented yeah, their lives. They're over not there. going back. <laughs> wow, Lord. <laughs> she looked concerned already. She looked like she's bossy as fuck. She looked oh, like. No, 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 over here. Yeah, yeah. Kelly Price over here. She's, yeah. the, no! <laughs> She's the girl that was so controlling that no guy on the outside would ever, you know, be able to deal with her. She deals with somebody on the inside. Sometimes you look at the woman and you're like, oh, there's a reason you're talking to somebody that's on lockdown because you, mm. a regular guy would walk away. This guy can't walk away. Dude got 23 hours to think of the best game mm -hmm. that he can think of in that cell. Dude's just saying well, everything. This guy, this guy looked like he stole a car. Had a lot of women putting money on his books. I was shocked. Look at I his face. Like, huh? This guy's look at, he look convincing. He looked like he need to help. Hey, yo, ma, then I shot Johnny over there. <laughs> that show. That uh, show, you got to watch. You got to okay. watch. It's so and bad. I'm on, I'm on the boys right now. The boys is killing it right now. The boys. What oh. channel? It's on Amazon. Amazon uh, what's it about? Uh, basically, it's a superhero show, but it's super, super violent. Oh, I can't watch violence. It's, well, other it's than bad. If Power is the only show I'll watch that's violent. Oh, Power is amazing. Power is so good. Amazing. Talk about sex scenes. Power captivates oh, they, they the most man. 
erotic they, sex scenes. I don't even need the penetration they, or the after fact. It's the, beautiful. The interracial legend. Can I ask you a question? Yes. <laughs> Is Ghost dead? In real life? Yeah. No, I'm talking about on the, the show. No, do you, I'm sorry. Do you think he's dead? I do. I don't think he's dead. Oh, you think he's coming back? I don't think he's dead. Okay, so the boys. I'm going to watch that show because my guy will probably like it. It's so, I'm I'll warning you, it was super life. violent. But like, it's like uh, if superheroes were in the world today, okay. how they, like there's a company called the Seven, uh, the seven bought, bought or whatever. And ba- basically, it's pretty much like an industry. They they rent them out. They lease out superheroes. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Side the, jobs. Fire. Yeah. yeah. They're like on fire. this side hustle. Yeah. But Independent it's, contractor. You'd be, there's, uh, you'd be very into this concept because like they lease them out to like certain countries. Like we need somebody to save the superheroes and stuff, so they lease uh, them out. But they're super sleazy boys. in real life on the other se- on the other end. Oh, but they sure. per- they're projected like they're living out their best life by yeah, helping project- people, but then they're living a horrible life. Themselves. Yeah, because they are celebrities and they have like they like oh no you can't do this because the the demographic likes to see like the that your hair blonde or whatever and you're oh. catered to little kids and stuff so they're like going through this celebrity type of like Whoa. oh I don't want to do these interviews oh I don't want to talk about this oh but then they get on camera and have to smile and be superheroes you but know. then but they're like doing drugs and like hookers and so you think doing ghost really is stuff. alive so power would think power is good about when violence is getting ready to happen they change the music so I can look away no. Otherwise, yeah. I will because I will look yeah. away. No, like, yeah, no, some so like good. boys are not the same. You'll be like, and then a pop head oh, explode. Wow. Question like, for, whoa, question for the room Do you think that, like, do you know those shows on ABC that shows like those couples and then they get into these reality shows with single people and then they try to like stay faithful? Do you really think those shows are real? Do you really think that'd be hard? For all them Temptation to Islands them and temptation stuff islands. like that and all that. Think, now, Lisa, Lisa, but I got my man, I ain't worried about it, yeah. but. You know, like other people, do you really think that is a hard show to be on? Like, if it's real, do you believe that would be a hard show for some people? Uh, everything's fabricated. Man. Everything, not, not only is everything fabricated, I think that'd be the last place you'd want to do it because now everybody's going to know, yeah, right? right? If you're going to do something on the side, you're Fame, still going to think you're not, but you're right. 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 Fame is That's a why drug. I asked that question. Yeah. Right. Like, the people will sacrifice their their. I just had a reality show reach out to me and offer me a stupid amount of money to show, do a show I'll called do it. Finding Love. I'll do where it. I would be the woman and I would be, there would be 25 guys. And of course, I don't talk oh. a lot publicly about my relationship. Right. So they were like, well, you've, you know, you always come off a single. Can you ask him, would he mind? You know, you just do this show. And I said, oh, first of all, listen, mm. I have no interest in the chaos because I love watching reality TV, but I don't have final cut and you can make me look like the worst person. I'm going to have to make out with these guys. You're going to make it seem like I had sex with these guys. Mm-hmm. And they, and they, you know, it's the money thing. They're like, well, it's this much money. And I'm like, I'd rather have less stuff and less money than do this. But I understand maybe somebody younger than me that's more building up their future, yeah. right? They're trying and, to get to that. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, but it's sure. the money. They offer a ton of money for some of these they, shows, ooh. but that's even scarier because they they're going to make you look like a fool because they think you want to be famous. And I think reality <clears throat> show fame is very different. Mm-hmm. They get looked at in a different it kinda, way, right? It kind of dies off quick, too. You got to do very a lot quick, of... Very quick. Yeah, you plummet, and then you got to do a whole lot of repairing to try to get back to... Get back to where... To yeah, do yeah, something yeah. Like, else. no, I'm actually talented. Nah, we don't believe you. It's yeah. almost like porn, yeah. right? It's kind of that same kind of thing where it's like, once you get out of that, you got to work a little bit harder to do something else. Yeah. Reality TV yeah. is next level because now everybody knows you. Yeah. Like, I can walk down the street, and a woman's not going to walk up to me and be like, oh, I love the Palin movie. But if I was on a Housewives or a reality show, right, women right. would know me. So yeah. now I'm doubling up the it's masses. demographics is different. Yes, now. Like grocery Scary, store. But yeah, you're right. Fame is such a weird drug. It so, is. It is. So, um, wow. What do you think? Who are you taking? Golden State or Boston? We're at game <sighs> five tonight. Man. And I cannot believe I'm working. I cannot believe I'm missing this game live. I'm recording it on my home DVR so I can access it from my iPad when I get back to the room. So you're not even going to watch. You're not even trying to get no notifications. I don't care. I will find out who won, okay. but I'll still watch it because I still like the game that much. Okay. I will, see, even though well, I know who won. Golden State is fun to watch. You can Golden watch. Golden State is fun to watch. Yeah. Um, I will say some pep talks. In Golden some State, pep too? talks Ooh. did happen last night with some players and me, um, because I think you know I, I, there's a lot of young players I like on both sides, but I, I gotta say Golden Way, Golden West does. Golden State does. What about Gary Payton? Dude was like, listen. <laughs> Golden State does this, dude. Oh but my god! In Golden State, I can't. In Golden, if they won in the Garden, you know, like the Boston fans the other night were brutal. They were bad, and, yeah. they, and they really got in Draymond's head. Yeah, it was really all got in Draymond's head. All series, they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All series has been like been talking care. about it. What happens? 
I'm going to go home and turn on this podcast. Yep. And I'm going to say what I'm going to say. But the remember, rest. when they were winning it all, he didn't have a podcast. Mm-hmm. All of these little distractions take away from recovery, relaxation, feeding your body. Now you're hustling to do something else. After you do that podcast, you got to upload that content to, con- to somebody. you got to have somebody do this. you got to, like, all of these things they were not doing yeah. when they were winning. And when the game ain't going around, just put it all aside for now. Yep. You put that yeah. shit away. Yeah. During, you do not, it's not do necessary. that. not necessary. Nope. Yeah. And that's why I sit in bench more in the fourth quarters now. They're like, ah, I'm sorry, Looney, we need you in here. Right. Like, Kaminga, come on, we need you. Like, there's, there's just so much youth on the both sides of the court. Both actually. sides, yeah. Like, the oldest guys are Curry and Clay. I know. And Curry and, doesn't and, and age. We're never going to think he's as old as no. he is because he doesn't no. age. No. That boy is still 24. I don't care about what I say. Yeah. Um, I'm always in the minor- minority with this, like, take. I, I think we're trying to crown Jason Tatum way too early. A lot of pressure for him to live up to next season if he doesn't play as well. They if trying he to slumps it all from going this long in the season, which players do. Um, they're trying to give him the crown as like this is our guy because he stands out on that team. He look, he, he's had, he has the look. He has the NBA look. He's the you're right. He's a nice guy. Yep. He has a he's clean cut looking right. guy. Like um, doesn't say a lot. I wasn't gonna go there, but um, you know, like <laughs> says this the right is, things on press, press conferences, humble. Sure, but they are trying to be like, oh, he's carrying his son around after yeah, the game, I'm like, you know, yeah. bringing up single mom as mom. But he disappears a lot, yeah. and like Jalen Brown picks up a lot yeah. of slack. Jalen Brown, is Jalen a, Brown be popping thirty. He is, he like, is unconscious out. sometimes. Yep. Yep. he don't. He's gonna. He sh- runs. Uh, he's also yeah. very unaffected by a bad play. He can make yeah. a mistake and recover very quickly, which yeah. is important. And then that's chase what, down, block you, yep. put your punch, like punch the ball against Ooh. the glass. Have you guys watched the movie The Hustle, Adam Sandler I'm about to start movie? it. That's a movie oh. or a series? I, I don't know if that was a movie or a series. I, 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 I saw it. I was going to press play uh, like yesterday. I didn't do it, though. Yeah, it I'm, I'm doing it. Okay, yeah. favorite movie I've watched in a long time. You might Ooh. do watch it the other night. You love hoops like I love hoops. Yeah. It is so good. Adam Sandler been I killing it. Loved did, did, uh, did Kenny Smith do a good job acting? Yes. Who is it? Kenny Smith. He's like his best friend. Oh, yeah, he? he's an agent. Oh, cool. It is so you have to watch it. I'm gonna rewatch it again because I loved it that much. It gives me but hope. it gives like I just love the sneaker squeaking. I love the training. I love everything about basketball. So you're gonna love it. I heard much. Anthony Edwards in it. Yes, too. he is. I heard he's like like he steals a, the show. But he plays a, a very bit. mean competitive. I saw player. a clip of him talking Perfect. trash to the to the, to the guy. Yeah, I saw a clip. He did really Sandler good. Kill it. To me, this is better than Uncut Gems. Everybody Ooh. love Uncut Gems. Yeah. Uncut this Gems is, is amazing. way better. Look at Kenny. He finally got a hairline. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you pulled me off that whole look. It's yeah. great. I, I can't wait to watch what? it. Must watch. Yeah. Must watch. Uh, any movies that you are looking forward to, have seen, oh, besides this one? Uh, you know, I haven't seen Top Gun yet. I don't do movie I theaters. Know. I won't go into a room in the dark with a bunch of strangers. That's just not my jam. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Nah, Way not you. Afraid. I wouldn't do that. No. No. Because no. one person will wait. Yep. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even yep. sleeping on a plane, I have to tell the flight attendant before I'm going to sleep to make sure nobody comes up. People will find me sleeping and take photos with me. I don't blame you. They will lean in and take photos. I don't photos. blame you. So, no, I haven't. So, I want to see that, but I'll wait till it's at home. But, mm. no, I, I think everything's just being fed to us on all these different applications, Netflix, Hulu, mm-hmm. HBO. It's overwhelming. You, it's, 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 I don't even know what's out anymore because now I don't watch Apple. commercials and there's <laughs> Apple, Paramount. Paramount like, you know, it, it's so many. I do love that HBO gives you your episodes once a week because you'll binge this shit on Netflix and then it's over and you're like, oh, it's over. I watched the whole right, thing. Right. I like that little knowing something is saved for me. Save yeah. something. Yeah, that's what I was enjoying with uh, winning time. I was like, oh, it's Sunday. Hi. Boom. Last Appointment week. TV still. It still yeah. sets you right. Yeah. It it's brings rhythmic. You back. What, right? uh, what kind of music are you into? Like, also, anything, any musically? Who's your favorite bands, artists, stuff like that? You know, what, what is. I go through my phases. I'm, I'm hip hop first. Right. Um, so anything from old school to Biggie and Tupac to now, like right now, I'm always like back and forth between like a the baby moment or, or Kodak black, or I really like G easy, like that whole sound. Right. I grew up growing up a PA. It was all rock and roll. You know, it was Pink Floyd, you know, I was in my metal Grateful kid. dead metal, iron maiden mm. rush, you know, was a, and all them. but I listen to anything, you know, like when I, when I'm just going to be chilling at home, I'll just listen to like some spa music, just some good background music, some cool chill sounds of Frank Sinatra, um, stuff like that. But 
I just, you know, I giggle a lot when I listen to hip hop. I, I, I love all of the sexual conversation. I love all of the, I'm going to fuck your mama. I'm going to go over to your house and fuck your sister. Like, I just listen to it and I'm like, yes, this is great. I'm like, I really be feeling though. I know, but I love it. Really? Why no, does it make me so happy? It. I'm like, when, I'm going like, to say it. You t- and then Barkley, remember when Barkley was being harassed by that guy? Barkley yeah. turned around and was like, you oh, better yeah. watch out. I'm going to go to your house and fuck your mama. I was like, I didn't notice he said that. He did. He did. That's what he said? Yes. And he admitted on McAfee that he will not be on social media because he's afraid if he has a couple cocktails, he will tell people how he feels and lose all of his jobs. So he just doesn't do social media. And then when I heard him clack back, I'm like, Barkley just said he's going to go to his house and fuck his mama. And I I loved it so much. I saw the the (gasps) him turn around. So but y'all, they gotta understand these dudes come from the like the seventies and eighties, yeah. bro. They ain't they are built different. You can't just like poke the bear. No. You can't put, poke no. these that bears. Was, no. That was they were saying something about people's mamas to uh, on other the court NBA players. That was like the first play of the game they were saying that. Uh, yeah. That's light. Remember yeah. Kevin Garnett and Carella yeah. Anthony? Yeah. La La takes yeah. like Honey yeah. Nut yeah. Cheerios. Yeah. You going? That's you going deep, man? Like, come on! I want to hear it all. Mic them up. Mic them up. Yeah. Let me hear. Them here. Like that, 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 that's why I'm kind of like getting mad at like, hey, throw that fan out. Dude he, was like, throw him out. I'm like, I'm getting kind of upset. I'm like, come on, bro. Yeah. So, I will uh, say this though. I went to the first uh, game where KD and Kyrie were playing together this season. It just so happened to oh, be yeah, yeah. the Nets were playing the Knicks at MSG, and I love MSG. So I went to that game, and I, you know, it's disappointing what you have to hear being yelled and it's disappointing because i grew up in the generation where you didn't swear in front of women or children yeah and i know we're oh. past that mm. but Out the it takes a lot of yelling for a ref to actually hear what's being said and to me it kind of ruins the environment of a game because i want it to stop i there are certain words that when i hear people say them i'm like i just want to leave now you know because it's upsetting it's unnecessary yeah. and i feel like each time we let them chant fuck Draymond, like we're, we're letting fans and people think this type of interaction. They're I've had people say fuck you to my face at the airport when I say no for a photo. We're like, well, fuck you then. And I'm like, you know what? Now I want to fight. Like you almost say fuck you to my face. You know? So right. we're just letting people go too far and it ruins the element of parents it's, wanting to take their children. Mm-hmm. You have young kids. You're not going to take them and pay yeah. that much money for a ticket to hear that shit. Well, to see how many people are running on stages uh, and running in on games and just I'm like just tackling people. But oh. like, it's, getting, you know, it's getting out of hand, man. This is trauma. The pandemic was trauma and everybody deals with trauma different. You know, we mm-hmm. know about PTSD. We talk about the disorder, but we don't talk about post-traumatic stress, which is also um, it's post traumatic success. There Ooh. is also success that comes out. Some people come out better. Some people come out worse. Mm-hmm. These people that are running onto this, the games, the people that are just yelling nasty things, these people that are knocking guys out. You saw that guy yep. knock out that Rangers fan yep. the other night at that oh, game. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that's just What's unnecessary. Yep. You can well, hurt- person, I do better when you talk trash to me, but don't touch me. You can. Mm-hmm. You, you could like, be hurting you somebody's father. Care. Like don't this guy me. has a leg, right. now it's, he's it's got ridiculous. a skull fracture. Yeah. Those are the people that came out of the pandemic worse. Yes. Then there's us. We came out more successful. We started mm-hmm. to grind out new shit. You took advantage of the bubble. You got more guests down here. You had a, we, you were with your children more. You spent time that you'll never get to spend that kind of time and do things. Talk you, about it. You know, we looked at it like, hey, here's where we're at. Other people were like, the second I get ang- out, I'm going to be raging. I'm going to be mm-hmm. angry. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to accept nothing from nobody because I haven't been able to be out. That's the problem. We're dealing with that mix right now. All right, mm-hmm. man. I don't know who to get in touch with who. When Popovich retire, I want her coach of my Spurs. <laughs> And we gonna win the championship. <laughs> she you know, got you're, it. You're not gonna throw me to the Titans. No, don't go, that me don't go to that. Don't go that. No, no, no. You don't need that kind of. No, 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 no. 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 You don't need. <laughs> yeah. No. No. no there's not unless you want you want friends and women around. I wouldn't mean. No, I wouldn't. No, go to don't, no. no. I'd go to San Antonio. You know, you get a good mixture of both. Yeah. 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 Good property in Texas. Yeah. In Texas. My bro but, brought me to Tennessee and some of the wrestling promotions. Ain't too many women around there. But yeah, that's another story. Yeah. But we've had you for like a really good amount of time. We want to appreciate you for spending this kind of time of with my crew. The goat the dropping. Yes, he Mike, says. The go- no, the, the yes. goat. The goat. The, the goat. And the goat. The goat. Yes, dropping all the knowledge, all the just lovely energy, all the positives. Just it was, it was a great experience. This I hope fun, you had man. a good time. This was really fun. Yes, we this had a was laugh. Really fun. Really fun. This is one of the first. Me. I looked at the board. And I said, "Our conversation is so cool. I'm just gonna go off cuff a little bit." Yep. I'm like, what you got? I'm like, you got? I'm like, we went back to our notes, but it's just, it's just. Your conversation is so welcoming, and for that's someone, what's great about podcasting. It's, yeah, it's just going great with a conversation, flow. man. You know, people, you, know, you you hear and you understand, you feel when people got it. I'm like Lisa, you got it. It's yeah. crazy. You so got it, man. Everything, appreciate you so much. The the greatest. 
That was amazing. Greatest of all time. Like, I learned so much, and I'm not going to take all this into my day, into my week. So now, we're going to close it up. Be confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Do your homework. Hey, you better, better close out on that frame. Wash your ass. <laughs> yep, I've been saying that my, this whole podcast. Until you had to edit it. Such a grandfather thing when you're getting ready to get in the shower. Don't forget to wash around yours and wash your ass. <laughs>